Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another StarCraft Brood War Remastered series, this time courtesy of our good friends over in China. This is a continuation of last uh, video, which was the... I will place a link up here. It was the Sulky versus Snow. And this series is very, very much like the ultimate battle in Korea which is a nine game series. Every single victory results in a prize. And the player who uh, gets five wins or more, the, the winner of the series will advance. They will continue on to go on against another uh, top tier Korean or Chinese player. So we're gonna call this the China Ultimate Battle or the CN UB. If you guys are looking for more games uh, from this series, I will make a playlist and you guys can check that out. Uh, just watch for my new videos where it says CNUB and it will be an ultimate battle uh, from China. Big shout out to our Chinese partners for making this happen, for allowing me to cast these replays, for sending them over uh, and supporting our English Brood War audience now. I want to say more, but we've already got some aggression coming here from Sulky. He sent out the early drone just to be safe, just to see what he could see. Uh, generally, you don't need to send this out because your overlord will get to the natural so quickly. Uh, but you won't see the barracks in time. This is an eight racks. And you could even lose your overlord as you're crossing this direction. So he gets out. He slows down the barracks. Forces a bunch of SCVs off the line. This is absolutely worth it for Sulky. He puts down his spawning pool immediately after spotting that. He gets his hatchery going and he is in a fantastic position. This is going to be a really hard game for Light to come back from. He's slowed down his economy drastically to get this early aggression going. And he's just being completely shut down. Look at this drone just getting these extra hits off on the SCV right now. Slowing it down so much. Little high drone here spitting on that SCV over and over. And now the Lings are out and the Marines have to run back home. This is a a real shutdown. This is about as shut down as you could possibly get with that eight Rex. So easy to handle when you just send out an early drone like Solki did. It's a little bit surprising to see Light do this on a two-player map. But it seems like he wanted to open the series with a quick win or at least a large lead in game number one. But it's backfired dramatically now. He may end up losing this uh, Marine here. Well, he's not going to lose too many Marines. Okay, run by. Looks like the micro is a little bit too good from light. All the links were going to end up dying. So he decides to just run by here into the main. He's going to see everything. He's going to see no gas. As a follow-up to say, Rax, he saw the CC. He's just going to run around inside the main base, make sure that these Marines waste as much time as possible while droning up back at home. Plenty of drones popping out here. The Lynx still running around in the main, but they will eventually be cleaned up. This is just great play from Sulky to slow these Marines down as much as possible. He could be pushed uh, back across the map and look at this light has to keep an scv in the in the gap here as well now that he's got the uh, scv scout in the main he knows that he can move out he knows that there's not a lot of links popping or anything like that but there could have been links coming and that's what's scary he's gonna get in here now and see a bunch of eggs are on the way he doesn't know what's in there but you can imagine that it's links and he turns around and heads back home after the overload spot spots this so forcing out quite a few lings from sulky when he would like to be building drones this is not a bad move from light uh, i like him doing that little move out and then turning around and coming back home but look at how late his cc is compared to a normal cc timing his second racks isn't even done and his academy is not even there yet and we're already at five minutes which is the time when a normal two racks play which is what this is should be popping out two medics and going across the map with stim it's just we're not at all in that position this is so late the lings are going to chase down the scv when 
Not before it spots the base down here in the bottom left, which is great. Or light, finding out about that is amazing. But I don't think there's anything that he can do to actually pressure. The, the ball is in Sulky's court right now. He's going to be able to pop out a bunch of mutas. He's already got lings on the field. First medic finally comes out here at 5 minute 30. And he starts range. Why are we starting range right now? Don't we need stim? Maybe he just wants to sit here with turrets. Just have turrets and have the marines sit around the turrets and just try not to take too much damage from the, the mutas. That's the only thing I can think when we see range coming up first. That makes no sense to me. It's always stim first, but here it may be more of a defensive play from light that he's going to get range ahead of stim. We'll see what he can do with that as the mutas start to increment out here for heading to the front. Two turrets in the main, one here uh, at the natural mineral line, two in fact, and one over by this kind of gap in between. So he's setting up a real wall along this line that still leaves an opening up here at the top. And if you go into the back of this area, there's not going to be any turrets here. Uh, so it could be really punishing if uh, Solki runs into that spot. However, that might be a bait. Maybe Light wants him to go into the back there, and then once he flies all the way deep in the back, he's just going to go for a bust across the map. But at home, we see Sulky building three sunkets. I think he's going to go for a dive. He will dive forward. He's bringing the Lings up as well. The Lings are going to come in and help to tank the Marine shots. The Marines are all dead. Now the Lings can help to kill the turrets. So the turrets are going to be going down here really quickly. Light scans. He was heading across the map, but he sees the triple sunken colony. He cannot break through that. He has to go back home. He doesn't have rate or he doesn't have stim yet, so he can't even get back here quickly uh, either. He's gonna lose another turret in the back. And Solki is just running away with this game. He's killing so many SCVs. His lings are still alive. He's got one more ling. It finally dies. But there's still so much space back here for our Zerg player to maneuver. He can just go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, keep dragging the Marines north to south and preventing them from ever getting good surface area he's gonna come back around again this is exactly what i'm talking about six total mutas have been cycled into this group that's just enough to kill scvs in one hit these scvs are super low by the way one turret finally goes up at the back but he has to lift the command center just to get his marines into position to deal with this finally most of the mutas end up going down we are just down to four mutas at this moment another one joining the pack but six muta is not a very strong fighting force however light is really really down and out he has almost nothing left he's almost even on the total worker count he has no real tech he's just getting the starport going now and there is already a ton of drones here for sulky he can do whatever he wants he's going to start a hydroden now We'll see if he even ends up using that though. Because he's got the link or the, the mutas here at the front. Just poking in everywhere they sense weakness. We got some medics walking out in the front as well. Might be going for those here shortly. He's actually just gonna pick off both the turrets. And now just sit behind the the mineral fields and just keep poking. There's no reason not to. He floats the factory just to get vision up there. We don't have any turrets in this position. He's trying to get one up right now, but generally how you get rid of mutas in this back spot behind your mineral patches is you leave. You go out with your marine medic, go across the map and try to put pressure on the zerg, force them to leave the area so that you can reset up turrets. But there's nothing that light can do right now to make him leave. And he's just going to keep on bashing away at this natural expansion. He's been hitting the factory over and over again to the point where it's just about to burn down. If he keeps bouncing glaives here, he's going to kill even more. But GG is called Light Taps Out before that can occur. Soul Key takes this first victory very convincingly. Although this was a 8 racks, an 8 racks out in the front that got shut down. Maybe with a better start, Light can put up a better fight. Let's find out. Game number two.
All right, game number two is Sulky in the top right, Light in the top left. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by that eight racks in game number one. Uh, we are super blessed to have uh, partners like the people in uh, China right now who are putting on tournaments like this uh, that really don't get seen by anyone. You're not going to see this tournament anywhere else except probably on this channel and on Billy Billy, which is a Chinese streaming site. Uh, more like a YouTube than anything, I guess, over there in China. But uh, they've been kind enough to supply us with some of these replays to share what they have organized. And for that, we are very grateful. This is an amazing time to be a Brood War supporter. A Brood War fan, if you're new to the channel, just know that it is my goal to create an environment or to produce content so that every Brood War supporter always has something great to watch. That was my struggle uh, a few years ago when I started this channel was that I just didn't have anything to watch. I was I was looking out for good Brood War content and there just wasn't anything reasonable out there aside from the ASL, which is so far apart. And so that's why I created this channel to just keep on making Brood War content so there's always something good to watch. Now, people like... Uh, organizers in China are the people who are helping to keep Brood War alive, guys. So we shout them out as much as we can. Hopefully, we're going to have a great partnership with them. They've been doing it for years. And kind of keeping it out of everybody else's view, you know? Nobody else is really paying attention to that. It's like a secret tournament that's been going on for years. And in parallel with the ultimate uh, Korean Ultimate Battle, which uh, as well has not been covered by... Uh, English casters, um, not for lack of trying, obviously. Some of some casters have tried it. I've tried it myself. Uh, been severely punished for it. Uh, it's uh, it's hard out here. Hard to get these out to you guys, but I'm glad that we're making headway. I'm going to continue to try to work with everybody who's willing to work with me to keep this beautiful game alive. So. With that being said, we've got a barracks here. One racks FE for light sending out two Marines on the map. He's just kind of hiding them from this overlord. As you can see, he just doesn't know where they are right now. Another SCV gets sent out on the map. He's going to try and sneakily send them back. They will be returned back without uh, Sulky's knowledge. So Sulky's actually built quite a few lings to counter this. He's got six slings out and this is no threat from light light is just sitting back at home and building barracks and getting his gas he will be going for a two racks push whereas four more sets of lings are coming so this is really fooled sulky it seems sulky is very confused as to what's happening he might even be thinking about ling all in which i don't totally hate because we've got light with no bunker and no supply depot at his natural. He's got nothing defensive over here right now. But look at this. SCV is going to come in and sees Ling's rallying. That's huge. He's going to see Ling's rallying and realize that he absolutely needs to cover this ramp. This ramp is everything. He should just lift this off. Okay, there it is. He does lift that off. He doesn't need to be worried too much about landing this immediately and getting to work. He really needs to worry about dying to these lings because if he doesn't die to the lings, he should be at a great economic position. He's going to wait for the bunker to finish. Another SCV goes down. But this seems like that's all Sulky's going to be able to get. Out of all of these lings that he made, that is rough. Look at how many are here. He's got 14 lings this early in the game. That's almost as many lings as he had drones. Which is not a good look. He has his spire coming. Has a drone heading down to bottom right. 
but it's a very poor position in this game for Soul Key. You can see he just doesn't quite have the drones to actually saturate this gas even. Even while the Aspire is just about to finish, he can't really mine from this. He's so drone poor in this game, he's going to have a really hard time of creating a threat to light with this Mutalist timing. He's still not mining that gas. We'll finally get to it now with these Mutalists first popping out. He's still got a lot of lings, so maybe, just maybe, if light starts to push out and he goes too far and the lings come in for a pincer and the mutas kill all the uh, marines and medics maybe then Solki can afford to build drones long enough to transition this into a normal game but it's going to be a difficult sell a few mutas popping out now some lings are going to try to run in to kill a turret but they don't have any room to do so two marines waiting here and they stim up and get ready light is playing out a great game right now of just crossing all the t's dotting all the i's just battening down the hatches getting ready for the aggression that's going to be coming out of sulky waiting for these mutas to come he knows that all he needs to do is counter them he will be in a fantastic position considering how well the early game went He's going to start a factory now. That'll be coming in just a moment. Has lots of turrets set up. He's even going four turrets here in the natural. Two in the main. Three over the barracks. He is not intending to lose anything to this Mutalist clump. There's only eight Mutas in this group just now. He could dive over this and try to get into the back. Uh with the supply depots to pick off as many SEVs as he can, but he's not going to do that dive. He's waiting for the Marines and Medics to push out. If these Marines and Medics come out and Light loses the entire army, Solki is going to look like a genius, but this is a very delicate situation. He has to make this work. So he's moving over here towards the natural. Thinking about going after these turrets, he's going to go ahead and pick one of them off. Moves around to the back of the Marine Medic Clump. Sees that they've been stimmed. Ugh, takes up kind of a dirty trade there. That doesn't look good. I'm going to pull out some of the injured Mutas and throw the fresh Mutas into the pile. He's still got quite a few Lings on the board. He does take one good shot there. Picks off a few Marines. But Light is controlling too well. He's not going to be able to deal with this. And Light is actually going to head home. He's keeping so close to the natural. He knows that there's a threat out on the map. These lings are just waiting for the marines to move in. Maybe he should have stayed and dealt more damage to the turrets. Kept clearing out this area as light was moving out so that he would move out further into a position that was actually killable. Coming in now, two-shotting these turrets. And he is going to remove all three of the turrets. So that's something that I have to admire about these zerg players their ability to come in and just open up positions over and over again despite being in a bad spot soul key is still making headway here but he can't fight against those marines and there haven't been too many kills on the scvs just yet we've got four racks and there will be a valkyrie out soon so the timer is on we still don't have a third gas online here for soul key he's just trying his best to pump out as many mutas as possible he just doesn't have the overall drone count to make that work you can see he's so light on drones he still can't mine this gas they're gonna fly in start to hit these turrets he's actually fighting with two groups of mutas right now he's got like what is this 16 18 mutas now Coming in, he's going to go after the uh, the bunker. He will kill the turret here as well. Killing off the rest of these turrets in the back. Wow, there's another one above this. So, so many turrets have been rebuilt. Let's take a look at the health on these mutas. They're getting quite low. And he's waiting. He's still waiting for the marines to push out. They just haven't yet. And there's about to be a Valkyrie. Now, there is the Valkyrie. It starts to hit these mutas. They're taking so much damage. And there's just no hint of a transi transition right now for 
Sulky, who's thinking about all inning with Midas, he's actually building Scourge. He's going to wait a few seconds and then go in with the Scourge. No, he's actually just going to dive in right now. Taking this fight with the Valkyrie and Marine Force is suicidal. My goodness, he lost so much. He's down to just seven Midas and he taps out. That was a little bit crazy. Sulky throwing caution to the wind in game number two. Diving in with two groups of Muta stacked on top of each other with the Valkyrie missiles flying everywhere. This Valkyrie, an absolute hero. Look, he's got four kills. Four kills. He only had, was involved in one real engagement. And he killed four Mutas in that stack. That's some insane value. Well, we're going to jump into game number three. See if Solki can clean up his act. Light going to be spawning in the top right. Solki in the bottom left. Cross map on Radeon for this third match. Solki put himself in a very rough position that last game. And had a hard time bailing out. Building all of those early lings to a mind game from Light. Light trying to avoid the vision of those overlords and doing a great job just identifying what was coming. Saw the ling all in ahead of time, dealt with it perfectly, and the follow-up was excellent. So you can see that Light is absolutely capable of taking down Sulky with a lead, but can he take down Sulky on even footing? Hope we'll be able to answer that this game. Hope nobody gets too big of a lead in the early game. We have to see desperate measures once again. I want to see these two go head to head with their early game, uh, you know, put together properly and nothing crazy happening. That would be paramount for me. We've got a supply depot first here in the front. So no eight racks. Likely see that thrown down. Isn't that wrong no maybe it's not i think you're supposed to put the other supply depot right there but i think it might be blocking i'm not sure not too sure anyway we are gonna have that supply depot over top for a nice little wall in at the front and it feels to me like light is going to play a normal game here uh nothing too crazy we haven't seen a gas we haven't seen uh, anything untoward from lights thus far. It'll just be a 1 Rex FE. On the other side, a 12 hatch coming out of Soul Key. I actually, I think it was an 11 hatch. Because we saw 11, 10, 9. No, 12, 10, 9, right? Okay. Oh, 12, 11, 10, 9. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Sorry, guys. It's really hard to do casting. <laughs> I know it sounds so easy. It seems so easy. But uh, when you put on the spot, sometimes the brain just doesn't function. Like last video, um, I said that uh, Snow versus Soul Key would be the finals had a Hero not beaten S Snow and taken him out. But then, I, I mean, I was there. And <laughs> I, don't, I didn't even remember that... Uh, you know, Sulky and Snow faced off in the semifinal. Totally forgot about it. Um, it was just because it wasn't something that I planned to say, and I just started saying it, and then, um, you know, I just, uh, yeah, just messed it up. It is what it is. Sometimes when you're under pressure, you mess up your words. It happens. We've all been there. We've got Layer here from Sulky. Everything looking super, super normal and natural. Nothing out of the ordinary thus far. Of course, SCV getting chased by two Lings. Hasn't taken hardly any damage thus far, so he's probably going to be able to keep this alive right up until that Spire goes down. It'll have to be a Spire. Because Soul Key really can't throw anything else down and hope to win this game if... Light spots the Hydralis Den. He would just know 100% what's coming and shut it down easily. We've got five Marines moving out on the map. They're actually going to move over here. He's looking for this Overlord. But the Overlord has already moved around that dangerous area and making its way over here to the natural. Going to get some good vision. But he has no idea where those Marines are. They could be just walking right in. Luckily at home, he's got six links. 
being careful. Those five Marines would have just gotten completely shut down, especially Lynx with speed. Absolutely hammered these five Marines. Now they are eight. So six Lynx probably can't handle that. Uh, depending on the micro from Light, he's probably just going to whack that down. And so Sulky will pull back. Just avoiding confrontation for now. Wow, he's going to take this space. Well, that's a little bit surprising. All right, I'm sitting up. I'm I'm fully alert now. Taking the base in the top left-hand corner. Wow, huh. Didn't expect that. Sulky really hasn't been harassed this game. Neither has Light. So I'm actually getting my earlier wish to see these two players on even footing going into mid and late game. Or at least going into mid game anyway. Let's see what Sulky can do with this six muta group. It's always nice. Gives you a nice warm fuzzy feeling as a Zerg player when you have six mutas popping at 530. It's just... Ugh. It really does feel beautiful. He even has his uh, upgrade on the way as well. And he will get all of those out on the field. Looks like they weren't all made at exactly the same time, which is the warm, fuzzy feeling I was talking about. When you've got six larva popping right as the spire finishes, oh, it just... It feels so good, guys. It's hard to explain. Did make some early links though, so some sacrifices were made. Muda's coming to the front now. Ready to start this engagement. We're waiting for at least six before we do anything with these. Six is that magic number. When you can start to kill marines. I think you can kill medics as well. I'm not sure about that, but... Five is when you can one-shot a marine. Six is maybe when you can one-shot a medic. I can't remember. But seven is when you can one-shot SCVs. I'll have to test that out at some point. We've got seven now. So you can see he dips in, kills an SCV, and just backs away. Slowing down the preparation of these turrets. Just being a thorn in the side of light. Now, light behind this has four racks. He's got a factory. He's beginning his transition. Sulky is only making mutas, overlords, and upgrades. He's resisting the temptation to start droning. Although he did get the third gas up and online. He could be going all in muta from here. That is a distinct possibility. If we don't see a, a, another uh, tech building here in a moment. We may end up seeing Sulky all in muta. He's waiting with his... Lings to the right hand side trying to dip in and deal some damage to these mutas so far it's not going well he's already lost a muta and he didn't really deal any damage the marine medic moving out on the field whenever the marines or whenever the mutas are visible in the natural it's a great time to start moving those marines and medics across getting some ground pushing across the map we got to be careful, though, not to lose this small group. Ooh, another bad trade there for Sulky. Makes me wonder if he's got, like, a bad latency in this game or something. Having a really hard time clicking these mutas and actually getting them to fire. Like, the lings are going to go down here on the right-hand side. The split of Marine Medic in two different directions is actually pulling apart Sulky a little bit. Now, Sulky getting on top of these Marines and Medics, killing off... Most of the remainder of that first force. But reinforcements have arrived. Gonna have to restart the process here. Keep picking off Marines until eventually he can dive on top of this group. And finish it off. He does have tech buildings coming now. We've got our Lurker upgrade on the way. Hive is coming here as well. The group of Mutas is pretty decent. And it's slowly but surely picking away at this small contingent of marines now we've got one marine heading around the map it seems like like doesn't know where the third base is but he's about to find out this one marine the lone marine here sending itself into well a uh, sunken colony 
That's unfortunate. But Light now knows that the base is over in this top left-hand corner. He can start to assault this base if he can get his Marine Medic over to that position. But Solki's just done such a good job of harassing and slowing down this Marine Medic group. The, the energy on all these is really, really low. He's got a few links together. This is almost the moment. When the links come out, Solki's ready to play. He's just about... Uh, put together this defense. He's just about ready to envelop this army and kill it all. Another group of reinforcements come out here, but I don't think that Solki is totally deterred. He's got 11 mutas to work with. A good group of lings as well. A few extra mutas scattered around. Has back home lurkers in position. The stacks are accumulating here. It's unlikely that Light will be able to break through either of those two positions. 11 meters moving through. He's going to start to harass Light. Now that his home base is secure, he knows that these groups of Marine Medics are no longer a massive threat. He can start to fly in, deal damage, pick off SCVs, slow down buildings, uh, kill Marines here and there. And there's really not much that Light can do about it. He can chase the... Mutas all the way to the back corner. These Marines on very low HP. Solki could fly through and hit from the back here. He can fly through and maybe interrupt some of these buildings that are being placed right now. He's going to go ahead and try to get uh, some kills in this mineral line. I think we do have energy for an irradiate. The first irradiate comes down. Pretty good split. Second irradiate, though, is going to deal so much damage. Oh my goodness. Insane damage for, on all of these mutas, but he is killing quite a few SCVs. Quite a few SCVs, in fact, going down. And, I mean, these Solki mutas did a fantastic job. They did what they're supposed to do, which is hold back the Marine and Medic during the mid-game and then deal as much damage as they can uh, before retreating all the way back home and setting up defenses. Looks like we're already adding on macro hatches as soul key now. We've got defilers with consume on the way. Nidus is complete. Looks like he's setting up for a defense in the main base at top left. He's set himself up in a position where it's going to be really difficult for... Uh, light to find any way in, any ground that he can make. First couple of science vessels flying in, looking for defilers. Stops that one before it could consume or before it could uh, irradiate that second defiler. One defiler for one vessel. Pretty decent trade for the Zerg player. More Scourge coming out. Really important that he keeps these active. Don't allow light to fly in and just irradiate these for free. Double drop heading up here in the top left-hand corner, but look at this. Solki is so prepared. The Scourge are not in time, but the two Lurkers are going to help out so much against this. The Ling's coming in as well. Going to absolutely clean this up. Very nice hold from Solki, and he has Crackling done already. The Crack attack coming in clutch in the top left. What? What happened there? I think he just double irradiated this uh, Lurker. Yikes. Double irradiant on the Lurker means he's still got a Defiler left over. And we're going to have another drop come in here. Can he get this with some Scourge? Going to go in for the drop. Nice. Dark Swarm goes down. A secondary Dark Swarm going to come in. The uh, drop ship falls. And all the lings are going to clear out these marines. Really nicely done by Mr. Solki. Hanging on here in this game. Keeping this base in top left alive. I really especially like the double lurker play in that main. He knew that light was partial to landing his marines right here on the edge. In order to run in and simply snipe the... Oh gosh, he's going to come in and try to, what, kill the the Defiler? Alright, he gets the Defiler. Another trade of Defiler for uh, Vessel. Still going to be a good trade for our Zerg player. 
killing off those vessels is so important we have to slow down that production we have to slow down that that growth towards you know that massive flock of vessels that can just irradiate everything another drop coming in right now the d matrix on this fire bat we're gonna pay attention to this the drop will be picture in picture the matrix fire bat running in here we've got a stack of three lurkers this can really work against the zerg player he's actually targeting oh no he targeted the sunken colony with the other uh fire bats so those were not able to deal the damage they were supposed to and now everything in the main base gets cleaned up that is so rough the vessels are still alive at least and looks like he's gonna do an eraser we do not have burrow do we oh this is so much damage killing a ton of workers you can see 10 11 kills on this science vessel two on that one I'm gonna fly into the main there's nothing to find here and the scourge will find them but yeah great great eraser trick there i don't know if it's gonna be enough though sulky has so much momentum behind him after holding all those drops and killing off so many vessels let's take a look at the upgrades we've got plus one finished what are we at plus two plus one so a pretty big advantage in terms of upgrades for Terran he's also got his third base uh complete and a fourth base on the way here in the bottom right hand corner but there's so much time for Sulky to just keep building drones right now he was stuck at like 35 drones after that last drop but he's managed to beef himself back up to 41 and he's got lots more on the way so he's probably gonna go up to about 50 drones and then start to just fill the map with the masses of ultraling he's got two two one and he's gonna start his next upgrade here soon another nice play goes down looks like he will lose this defiler most likely the defiler over here gets irradiated the vessel stays alive this time which is great for light you want to be getting irradiate kills on defilers without losing your uh, vessel that is number one that is the best we've got plus three done already wow light is really ahead in these upgrades plus two armor plus three armor just started so there's a long time that light's gonna be you know one upgrade one attack over the uh, armor of the zerg player a few more drones gonna finally be sent back to mining pretty close to what i said 48 drones six more on the way actually so we will get to like that 50 plus count first few ultras are gonna come out and try to put some pressure on the bottom right i don't think this really does anything especially not with the scvs on the ramp blocking everything and we've even got the barracks here as long as you put like two SCVs on this ramp or two medics on this ramp and you put the barracks over top of it, you cannot be broken in this bottom right. You cannot be broken on this ramp. So we'll keep an eye on that. See if he makes that move because it really seems like he built the barracks over here in order to make that happen. He's starting more factories finally. Is he going for the style that we have seen from flash recently that big mech switch he's actually got a second armory on the way that's pretty important double armory here in the main base but he's only just started plus one which whenever we've watched flash play he gets his upgrades going for mech way early oh there's such a big plague opportunity he kind of whiffs it he gets a lot of medics in that plague but he doesn't get very many vessels whereas he could have gotten uh, an insane number of vessels medics and marines uh, had he reacted just slightly quicker however he is breaking down into the bottom corner scourge are going to come through they try to get some kills on these vessels but they just push everything back so much plague on this army and so many ultras coming out now sulky is running away with this game he's going to double expand on the left hand side great choice with the lurkers out here to help defend as well I think that he is in an immaculate position this game. That barracks is over top of something. It's a medic. One medic on the ramp actually could block out the ultras and make it impossible to breach this position. One vessel with full energy just went down there. That is a big loss for our Terran player. He's still got a pretty good fleet of vessels. Eight vessels here in the middle of the map. 
but those could go down really really quick getting a couple more radiates on some of these ultras is amazing but the vessels will go down and again it's not a great trade defilers pushing forward picking off tons of marines and medics and shoving back light all the way into his third base he has another factory here so he is building a lot of tanks and could come to a position where he can hold and overwhelm uh soul key with his tank count but it's still a long way away and the armor upgrades are insane he has so much armor right now uh whereas only plus one is going to be finished for these tanks so how can they possibly stand plus one tanks versus plus three lings and ultras plus three armor on those lings and ultras is just going to do so well uh for these zerg units coming up gonna get some more free irradiates on all of these ultras that are running through the middle of the map big group of marine medic and firebat out here in the front he's just about maxed out but same goes for sulky who's now got more gases locked down as his fifth and sixth base come online I'm hearing tank fire, but I'm not sure where it is. There it is. Some ultras getting baited in to this position. Oh, a big engagement here in the middle of the map. There's just not enough bio forces to fight all of these ultras. A lot of the vessels are going to go down. A lot of irradiates are going to get off on some juicy targets. But at the same time, so many uh, bio units went down. A big drop coming in right now over here. To the top left hand corner looks like another ultra got fished in to the tank fire over there uh, at the bottom right these units just going to get dropped right underneath dark swarm and cleaned up easily by lings and ultras that are coming in from multiple angles that oh man that double drop got taken down so easily it's generally not a good idea to drop after ultras are out because ultra can easily clean a small number of uh, bio force is now coming down here he's gonna bring a lurker to the low ground because the tanks can't hit that and they're gonna start to hit these tanks up here on this high ground there's no medic underneath this any longer uh so he can't actually block the ultras from making it up this ramp however another big group of irradiates go down on these ultras i just don't think it's enough though he's gonna try and take a another base uh, a fifth base over here but we're six base gas ultra ling scourge i don't know if this can stand up we've got plus one plus one but we are five five armor ultras with huge amounts of lings defilers and all it's like he will clear out this uh natural but army coming in from every different direction now ultras hitting from the left and bottom lings as well making their way on top of these tanks so many tanks are going to go down here this was about 12 tanks a moment ago and it's about to be zero waves of lings crashing over this iron wall of tanks bashing it to oblivion and with the tanks going down here at the front this was the defense for the natural so he could absolutely push in here towards this natural and maybe take out the main base while a lot of the production is actually down here in the bottom right so many tanks are here we don't really have that much over uh, in terms of defense over in this position he has another defiler making its way forward if he gets a plague on this group of bio it's probably going to be over oh man the plague is huge god damn yeah nothing really that light can do everything dies so quick after it's been plagued like that especially with an irradiated ultra in the mix he's gonna kill the tank lings are gonna shove their way in another great plague another great irradiate as well he's pushing up in towards the main base rallies upon rallies will be coming across to eventually push down this main and light cannot lose the main he's got too many uh structures in that main base that he needs to protect he has to do something so he's gonna move out his entire army onto the map he's not got plus two yet but he's almost at plus two 
for his tanks. He's going to try and get out here and maybe contain the natural. Do something to stop the Zerg from taking out his main. Do something to uh, try and fight back in this game. Tanks are moving forward, but Lings and Ultra is going to jump right on top of them. A Defiler is here as well. Nothing he can do about that. Another Defiler comes forward. More Lings hitting from all different angles. These tanks are being cleared up and GG is called. Light taps out and Soul Key is victorious. Okay, game number four. We got Light in the top right. Soul Key in the top left. Another eight racks out front. Like going to be putting on the early pressure once again. Trying to get in there and deal that early damage. Maybe throw off Soul Key to start the game out. Because it felt like in that last game where both players were able to play exactly the way that they wanted. Light was not really able to stand toe to toe with Soul Key. So looking for options on ways to avoid just a standard and even mid game here. Light is going to try and put on the pressure and he's going to get lucky with a 12 hatch coming out. Soul Key is fully uh, exposed to the risk of an eight racks. Uh, should there be bunkers out in front of his natural right now, he's going to have a very hard time holding that off. You'll have to pull all the drones, of course. He didn't send out an early drone across the map to check and see if something like this was coming. He's only just now sending out the drone, but this is a very normally timed drone uh, moving forward. You can see he's actually pushing that drone, trying to get it to catch up to the SCV so he could put some damage on that. Now he's going to find two Marines on the high ground. He almost loses the drone. Ooh, 6 HP. So close. Big pull of eight drones coming out to the front now. The bunker is nearly halfway complete, though. This drone was supposed to be uh, ready to prevent a bunker from getting started. But now that bunker is nearly complete, can light finish it? About time to run by here with half of the drones. Try to prevent any extra Marines from coming up to join this party. One bunker is going to finish and three Marines are available inside. He's going to run the drones back into the main. He realizes that those are under threat right now. Could easily be picked off. He does send them back to the natural. And he's preventing these Marines from coming forward. You can actually abandon this right now, I think. But he's going to jump on top. He's going to try and kill these Marines. Two Marines are going to get one kill. Two kills. Three kills. Very big damage there. And the drone, the other two drones will survive. Lings are going to finally come out and clear this. But three drone kills is actually enough to make this worth it for light. Good idea to pull the drones to the side here. These three Marines could easily have gunned down that one low HP drone. Making this far more worth it. But as it stands, I think that light is going to be satisfied with the uh, early game harassment. He's not light years ahead, but he is slightly ahead with those three drone kills. And all the slowdown with the mining, of course. And not many SCVs were pulled, just the two SCVs. So he's going to be feeling pretty good, I think. He has a lot of SCVs in the natural, just making sure that he's not going to get overwhelmed by links. He should be able to send those back to work in just another moment. He's actually going to send out another SCV here. Because this one is going to lead the Lings a little bit to the south. Let's see if he can actually get in with this second SEV. He really wants to know what's coming. If there's going to be a Ling all in or whatnot. I need to make sure of that. Make, make sure that there's not that Ling all in. And it looks like he will get into this natural. That is huge. After the 8 racks dealing the damage and then getting the follow-up scout into the main. Absolutely brilliant here for... Light, he's going to be able to delay his uh, commsats for a good long time. And he doesn't even have academy yet, so he is a little bit behind the curve with this 8 racks play. Does slow you down a little bit. We're already past 5 minutes. We still don't have, of course, that academy done, just like in a previous game. It's a bit tough to get a marine timing going when you opt for such early pressure. 
Here, he's going to be hiding behind his wall. That's quite a lot of lings. And I honestly, I don't feel as bad uh, for Soul Key whenever I see him build a lot of lings in the early game. I'm like, ah, well, that sucks. Usually, that would I would say that would really put you behind as a Zerg player, having to build all of these. But if you're Soul Key, I just know that these are going to be utilized really, really well in combination with the Mutas. To do a lot of damage he's actually building more lings that is kind of a shock that's a lot of lings guys are we going all in once again or is he just gonna catch this marine medic move out at the perfect time right as he starts to push there's the scan what does he see he sees the natural with not that many drones there's still quite a few but no sunken colony two fire bats pop is he gonna move out with the fire bats or is he gonna leave them behind in the wall Oh, I think he's going to leave him behind in the wall. The Marines are going to start to move out. These Lings have hidden themselves pretty well. Lings trying to poke in, pretending like they're going to go for the backstab. But this is actually a surround play. Here we go. Lings going to jump on top of this. Light slow to react. The surround is perfect. Impeccable. Soul Key clears this up with brilliance. Absolute destruction there. Massacre on the field. Is Lings easily taking that fight. And now Soul Key reclaiming that lead. After the eight racks damage, he ends up picking off all of those Marines. He's going to be feeling very, very good now. He goes ahead and grabs his third in the center left. There's no pressure that can come from Soul or from, from Light at the moment. So we could see Soul Key just completely transition. And just go, I don't even need mutas. And just go straight into a Hydralis den and a whole bunch of drones. But it doesn't seem like that's the path he wants to take. He's actually still building mutas. He's going to come in try to get some more damage. Fight with these marines. Lower that count. You can't blame him for it. He's so good at it. Might as well come in and get some damage with these mutas if he's going to make them. He comes in. Picks off quite a few marines and will have to back out. Like he might be able to get a couple more SCVs on the on the exit. But anywhere he flies out of this base, he's probably going to end up losing a few mutas at least. With all these low HP mutas, he's going to just go ahead and snipe a couple more. Trying to get as much as he can out of this. And on the fly out, he loses one more muta. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Still no Hydralis Den just yet. Scans going down everywhere. Looks like a scan down here as well. Lings are at the front, but two fire bats makes it pretty impossible to break through this position. Good number of medic marine has finally been pumped out. Where are we at with upgrades? Plus one has just begun now for light. He's struggling in this game right now to stabilize. Doesn't have a factory out just yet. Doesn't have any answer, a real answer for the Mutalists that are coming in and just pulling this area apart. Firebats are going to be sent out. They get killed off immediately. No kills on either of them. So Light is floundering a little bit right now. He's having a hard time moving out. He's having a hard time just defending against these Mutas. I mean, it looks like Soul Key's ready for more. He's going to come back in here, start to pick off even more of these Marines. And the Medic has no energy to repair all of these, to, to heal up all of these Marines. So he could come in here and actually break this position, but he's not going to. Instead, looking for more SEV kills while making the transition. Hydralis Den is on the way. We do have that f uh, factory above the base. It's uh, Starport way up here in the top corner. A little bit of an interesting location to start making that. A little, little difficult for Soul Key to harass. But he could go all the way up there. And break into this position. One starport. I think we're going to see... Oh, there's a second starport. An armory, yes. Armory here. He will be getting into some Valkyries. But this time... As opposed to game number two. We actually have Lurkers on the way. And a Queen's Nest as well. So... As long as he delays this well enough, as long as he slows this down, or even if he picks off this group, he will be able to make an easy transition into Lurkers. 
We've got quite a few lings, some extra backup mutas just south of this position. The Marines are moving out quite aggressively. If he takes the fight, Sulky could win, but he could also lose. He needs to pick off a little bit more before he fully engages with this army. If Light clears up everything, the pressure is going to be completely on to Sulky, who doesn't have Lurkers just yet, or Sunkins ready for this fight. He's starting to pull the trigger. He's starting to come in, but Sulky's just at the periphery waiting for the engagement. He's waiting for this critical moment when all the Marines start to engage on multiple sides. He's going to come in from both ends and clear out everything. Beautifully done once again. Picking up all these kills on all these medics and Marines. These Marines are going to be caught as well. Four more Marines. Sacrificial sent out on the map. Just trying to reinforce that small bio ball that just got ripped to pieces. Some Valkyries are sitting behind this, but we're already into Lurker. This is domination once again from Solki. He has everything going for him. He'll soon have Defiler. As long as he sets up a wall and a containment of Lurkers here with five Lurker, you're not going to be able to break through that, which is pure Medic and Marine and the factory is just now adding on a machine shop. We don't have a tank, or we won't have a tank for quite some time. We do have uh, attack upgrade coming for the Valkyries now. We do not have armor on the Marines, so they will still get two shot by these Lurkers. A big difference having that extra one armor on those Marines. And there's the big spread. Now seven Lurkers at the front. You just can't break out of this, unfortunately. He flies around with the Valkyries trying to pick off the Mutas before the fight actually happens. This is so many Lings ready. So many Lurkers. There's only one Bunker. Oh man, he's just going to go for it. Not even going to wait for this uh, Defiler to show up to end this game. He's going to drive home the point right now by running Lurkers straight into the natural and breaking apart light. Beautifully done by Sulky. From start to finish, he handled everything very well professional play from him dealing with the eight racks picking up that medic and marine ball over and over again and eventually transitioning into lurker excellent excellent game out of him light really needs to pick up the slack let's see if he can make it happen game number five here we go into game number five light is not looking confident against sulky in these games he's having a very hard time taking any small wins off of this Incredible Zerg player. By the way, this was played just after... I think I might have mentioned this earlier, but let me mention it again. It was played just after the uh, previous ASL victory for Soul Key, his second in a row. It was in May uh, uh, 30th, May 29th, something like that. End of May of 2024. So just high off of a very big win. Sulky taking multiple, multiple games off of light so far. There's still plenty more to go. It's nine games. It's got to feel bad if you're already, you know, if you're tanking and just not able to take any wins and you know that you still have to play all nine games, it's got to be pretty feels bad. Like maybe today's just not my day. I'm feeling a little bit off or something and then you just have to play out all these nine games pretty rough hopefully light is able to pull it back together hopefully he can find a way to take out soul key and at least a couple more of these games we've got the wall here in the front on retro soul key looks to be taking a 12 hatchery with confidence after the hold against the eight racks in in the previous game like game number one, if you remember, he went and pulled the drone uh, to beat the eight racks. He pulled a very early drone and got one over on light by just scouting that eight racks immediately and kind of shutting it down, slowing it down at least and forcing a lot of pull on SCVs, many SCVs to pull off the line. So this game and the last game, eight racks was not affected. Sorry, this game not in the last game it was not very effective and it didn't even get scouted or 
uh, you know, defended with the drone, the early drone pull. And this game is no different. He's not going to pull the drone until just now. He sends it up towards top left. He's going to find light and his little wall in. This is a completely tight ling proof wall. You cannot get through there with any lings. I don't think unless I think that's actually ling proof, right? Did he leave one hex in between? It feels like this could be down one hex and it would be ling proof. Like if this was down one hex and this was down one hex, I think it would be ling proof. But I think there's actually one tiny gap there. I could be wrong about that. Layers on the way. Where are we going to take our third base? Soul key. He's got no indication of taking a third base just yet. It is still a little bit early. We have those lings, the first two popping out, just to deal with this SCV as he can now see that there's no intention from Light to move out just yet. These two Marines are actually going to push forward. And a Vulture is on the way. I didn't even see the gas. There's got a Vulture coming. Mixing it up in a big way here. Game number four, five. Sorry, guys. I think this is game number five now. Sunken Colony will get up in time. Everything looking good. For Sulky. And Light is going to send that Vulture across. He won't find anything, though, with it. What is the follow-up play, though? Right into Armory. Machine Shop. And, of course, he's got his Command Center just about to be done. More and more drones. Looks like a hatchery maybe placed here at the front. Nice to block up this area because there is always the possibility of a vulture speed timing attack where he just suddenly runs in and surprises you with you know, three speed vultures. He's going to try and run by here. Gets one drone. Well, that's, that's not worth it. That was a really great pull. Uh, by Sulky, just bringing all the drones together and sending them to the gas and then hitting stop position on top of the vultures as they try to run by. One drone kill for two vultures doesn't seem like a very worthwhile trade. And on top of it not being a worthwhile trade, there's also the fact that you've kind of revealed that you're not going for vulture drop anymore you wouldn't throw those vultures away if you weren't were actually going for that drop so sulky is feeling really good right now absolutely fantastic he's just gonna go straight into meet us he's got a third hatch he will be able to take a third base soon that's another thing you just you know that there's no no vultures on the map to stop you from taking another base so we could just send, see a drone sent out right now. Just go take another one. Go take bottom right. Sometimes it's hard to get down to bottom right uh, in a situation like this because you would have to send your mutas along with the drone to make sure that it doesn't get killed by a vulture. But in this case, he doesn't have to worry about that. He could just, you know, just click a drone down to bottom right, take that base. Usually you end up having to take this one just because it's so far. It's so far to get down there and you're going to lose it to the vulture. I'm going to fly in now. He sees... The Goliath play. Some pretty good damage here with the... Oh my gosh, he gets one of the Mutas already. That's crazy. He really did finish up that uh, range upgrade super quick. Burrow just finished. Start to set out Lings all over in front of the Terran Natural. Just so that he knows exactly when everything's going to start to move out. It's a very good move by Solki. Uh, drone actually heading over to the center right. A sneak base in the center right. I like it. This is a great base to take against mech. Especially like Goliath, mass Goliath play. Because as soon as you get creep, you can start to build Sunkins out here. And then they have to run uphill against Sunkins with Goliaths. It's just never a easy fight. Such a difficult way to, to engage with Sunken Colonies when you have to run up a ramp. Comes in, kills one SCV, backs away, takes a bit of damage. It's okay. 
are we going to combat this with just pure Muta in this game? I'm very curious what Sulky's plans are. He's gotten in and he's kind of seen what's coming, right? He sees four factories. Now, if you see four factories, there's even a fifth factory. You know that it's just going to be pure Goliath and plus one, plus one. So maybe he'll move out with plus one armor. Maybe he'll move out with uh, plus one attack. Or maybe he'll move out with both. Uh, it just depends on when he decides to actually leave the base. He's got a pretty good number of Goliaths so far. But it doesn't seem like he's quite ready to move out just yet. This base over in the center right is going to finish up. Big group of drones being sent to transfer over to that base right away. Another base at six. These are great bases to take. Because again, you can build Sunkins right up to the ramp. Make it very difficult for your opponent to attack these bases with Goliath. Two sunken colonies at the front. More mutas in production. Muta armor on the way as well. Here comes that push. Plus one armor is going to be the answer. Plus one armor. And go on five factory. I don't know if he can even afford that, especially not with losing a few SCVs as he's moving out. More Goliaths going to be sent out. There's so many Goliaths on the map at the moment. Uh, as the creep starts to push forward, he will start some sunken colonies. More Mutas coming across the map. He's forcing everything back. Forcing all of these Goliaths to turn around and go home. Doing some more harassment in the main base. Just a couple of Goliaths there to deal with that. Four Sunkins in the natural. Twelve, uh, six o'clock is going to go down. I sense that uh, Light might actually be fine with this. Once he kills this base, he might just go back home and wait for plus one attack. And then, you know, go across uh, once that's done. Maybe even build the tank to try and break the natural. He has plus one about halfway complete. He's going to go ahead and leave once this has been killed. Will he send everything back home? Because the Mutas are jumping into the main base. Just going to go after the SCVs. He's going to kill so many SCVs. And Light actually thinks he's ahead right now. Because he killed that. Uh, he actually killed the 6 o'clock. Now he's going to try and run directly into the natural. This is 6 sunken colonies. But that's a lot of Goliaths. A 7th sunken is going to finish. And more are starting. He's actually going to force the Mutas to pull back. So the Mutas are going to come all the way back home. And they should be able to actually clear all of these Goliaths. If they just dive on top of them, he probably can just finish them off. One Goliath walking around the map. Maybe eventually is going to find center right. I'm not sure though. We've got triple sunken here on high ground. Mutas are diving on top of these Goliaths one by one. Picking them off. Now starting to go to work on the SCVs. The... Goliaths are heading back home slowly but surely. They will get back here. But so much SCV damage has been done. 24 SCVs remain. And I think that once Light finds out about the base in center right, he might just tap out, realizing that he's been bested here. Had he found out about that center right, you know, an S extra SCV on the map or something, to find out about that, he could have gone to the center right to deal with this base rather than trying to break into all of these sunken colonies in the natural. He will find out about it right now. Is he going to tap out? I think he should. <laughs> I think he will. He's got... Tw yeah, there we go. <laughs> he was just assessing the situation. Processing the loss there for the last few seconds. Well, maybe he didn't even notice. He just, where's my Goliath? And then he saw on the mini map that this uh, <laughs> had four sunken colonies here on the high ground. And he knew that he was just boned. He taps out. He leaves this game. A nice opportunity. Nice uh, try there by Light to go for a different style. Trying out the Goliath. Seems like Solki has his number though in this series. Let's see if he can bring it back. Okay, our next game of the series, we are on Vermeer. Cross map situation. This could go long. There's a good possibility of that. I would love to see Soul Key versus Light in a powered up situation with both players claiming, you know, four or five bases. We did see it one time where Light was transitioning into tanks. 
but made the mistake of not getting his upgrades going fast enough. If you're going to make that big transition into tank, you need to start those upgrades and get that transition rolling a little bit quicker. Otherwise, Ultra Ling just rams right through everything. The trades are too good. And we saw the result in that game on Radeon. Now, here on Vermeer, not going to be opening with any sort of 8 racks, of course. It's way too big of a map with four different spawns. Too many chances to just miss out on early damage. So, Light instead, he's going to build maybe this barracks on high ground. Might actually build on low ground here. I'm surprised if he does build it on low ground because he already built the first supply depot in the main which is a missing part of this wall eventually he will add this on like right after the barracks um maybe he's his plan is just to have two buildings here in the front not the third to make it a full wall the ling tight wall he's gonna have a gap here and he's probably gonna have a gap here uh, but with proper control and scv blocking marines blocking in the corners it should be fine We've got a 12 hatch out of Sulky. We'll be taking that uh, gas right after pool. So pretty typical build from him. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. Could be going for a 2.5, but more likely I think we'll see a third base. Most probably in the natural of one of these two locations. Excuse me, Force Drone is out on the map now. Crossing paths with the SCV. Doesn't quite know where his opponent is at just yet. First Marine is out. Second SCV checking bottom right. Gonna find out that that's not the location of Soul Key. Rather, spots the Overlord. And the pathway across to the natural of the Terran player is not safe. There's a, there's a place right here. Let me just go ahead and pull this up. As you come across, along here, you might go along here. This is safe. Um, but coming across here is not safe. So there's an opportunity there for Light to perhaps catch this. You can see he's already got Marines out in the middle looking for that drone as it comes forward. He would love to snipe that. But it seems like Sulky's really on top of it. Will he stop here or is he going to try and make a dash with the overlord i say dash in air quotes because uh the last thing that overlords i would characterize them doing is dashing um seeing the number of marines here is okay it's a little bit unfortunate that he can't see the barracks whether it is m pumping or not because that's the way that you generally figure out if there's going to be a vulture follow-up or not and Two Marines really doesn't tell you anything. Oh, he lost the drone. He tried to run by. He really wants that information, but he's just not going to get it. That is a pretty big denial on the side of uh, Light. Are we going to build a Sunken? I think the safe thing to do right now would be to build that, but it seems like he's going to forego it. He feels... He, he, he really doesn't know, but he must have a sense that that's not going to be coming... There's the dash. He's making a run for it. The Overlord. I think he's just about out of sniping range. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't stop there. That's the worst possible place to stop. Um, Soul Key? <laughs> All right. He's just going to chill there. This is like the danger zone. That's a little bit funny. Um, <laughs> not sure what he's thinking. You could easily get it over to here and that would be perfect. He's got lings out in front now. He's actually building a lot of lings. This is a little bit funny. He's sitting on two drones, building a lot of lings. I think he's hoping that the marine move out will come and that he'll be able to crush it once again. Factory behind this and a starport. So it's unlikely that we'll see a move out from light anytime soon. He might. Oh, this is kind of a fake move out. Dude, Light might just get crushed here. Oh my god, he's making a run for it. Oh, he just barely gets back behind that wall. We still might be able to do some damage because the cracks are not completely uh, filled with Marines. The Lings are getting blocked pretty heavily, so they will all die, but pretty much every Marine goes down. There's only two left. 
no threats on the map for Sulky to worry about at this point. We're going to get a bunker going at the front. This is a very interesting build. He's going straight into Valkyrie. I think the position right now for Light is insanely good. It would have been even better if he had stayed behind this wall. But it's still very, very good right now. Some turrets are going to start. Light will get these... Uh, defenses set up as soon as possible still only two drones in the natural so this is pretty dangerous situation for soul key if he doesn't do massive damage with these first few mutas he's going to be in really big trouble you can see one muta is getting targeted right now by the turret the turret does go down though and he's forcing everything back and to go after this last marine and he can take care of the or take over the barracks area which is a big deal Holding down the barracks right now, not allowing things to increment out. Valkyrie is going to be popping in just a second, though, and that's going to change this game. Valkyrie comes, does get the patrol micro on that. The Muta is taking a lot of damage. They're going to move over towards this natural now. Start to pick off a few more SCVs. Lings are coming in, but they certainly can't get by this bunker with the Marine inside. They're going to die on the way in. Valkyrie. Gonna take some pot shots at these mutas. Only takes a single volley from the mutas and gets two volleys for itself. Great control so far from Light, but he's gonna lose the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie goes down. A second Valkyrie pops out. Does get another good volley onto these mutas. He really needs to keep this alive, but he loses it. That is a huge moment here for Soul. Keep picking that off. Now he's got Scourge available. To really punish any Valkyries that start to pop out. He's preventing the turrets from creeping their way over here. Valkyrie is very close to popping. It would be nice to actually stim the Marines and try to snipe these Scourge. Because they are just going to kill that Valkyrie the moment it comes out. Here we go. He's sniping the Scourge. He's going for it. He gets the Scourge. And he keeps the Valkyrie alive. That's huge. Really tense moment right there for uh, Light. He is going to lose the Valkyrie now. But he's done a few more volleys and kept this Mutalist count very, very low and weak. Not much health on any of these. Trying to pick off the Starport, but actually loses another another Muta. Oh, and Muta's flying in as well. That is huge. Only two Mutas are going to escape, and he lost one of his reinforcing Mutas. This has become a really crazy game. We've got Hydroden and Lurker on the way. He is doubling down. On this aggression, a secondary bunker's coming up, though. Light is on top of this. He knows what's coming. He is going to shut this down really hard. And I don't know where Sulky can go from here. He's probably going to dive into the main again. He still could take control over the barracks, but he needs to snipe this uh, Valkyrie first. If he can't take out this Valkyrie, then Light is just going to splash down all these mutas. Here we go, diving in. The Scourge aren't there, though. Uh, if only he had led with the Scourge, he could have picked that off. Overlord's still alive here over the natural, but it should be picked off pretty soon. That would be a huge pick because we really don't have much mineral income right now for Light. He actually added on a few more drones now to the natural. Still no third base, though. Queen's Nest is going to start. This is a wild game so far. And it could start to ramp up even further if uh, Sulky finds a way to maneuver himself into a third base. I really don't think that he can break this triple uh, bunker with a Valkyrie. Two Valkyries now. There's just no way. There's no way that he can get in here and break this. He's going to start to punch away at these uh, SCVs. He's got some Scourge underneath the stack. And the worker count is actually surprisingly even at this point. There's the third base. All right. We are going to switch things up into a more macro game. Lurkers are morphing. If he just gets lurkers down here to the, to the ramp, there's not a lot of Marines. There are a bunch hidden in these bunkers. So that's important to note. There's only two racks production though. And Valkyries are the only thing on the map. So there's a lot of opportunities here where... Sulky could potentially bring himself back. Uh, hiding lurkers out on the field and setting up a lurker uh, landmine could be his path to uh, bringing himself back in this game. 
Um, it really does feel like he wants to do that. He's sending these out all across the map. We've got one Marine headed up to top left. That's going to be blocked, seems, by the uh, Mutas on this side. He's doing some scans just to figure out what's going on in the main base. He sees the Hive timing, which is very important here. And another Marine's going to be sent out in a different direction. He really doesn't know where the third base is just yet, but he knows there must be one out there. He's building some tanks, getting into kind of a... Okay, let's take a look. Does he scan that? He did. He scans top left. He finds that base. Where are the Lurker landmines? There they are. Lurker landmine out here. Some Lurkers heading out on the map. More at home as well. Armor starts. We could be in for a long game here, guys. It was looking very uh, close to the end just a moment ago. But it now seems like we could get a nice long game out of this one. Pretty hard to end when your opponent's base is so far away. But Solki was quite intent on making that happen. Now we've got tanks out. It's really a fantasy build. What we're seeing out of light at the moment. He hasn't added on any science facilities. So it's really scary to walk out on the map. And this could be it, guys. This could be the moment. Oh, he doesn't have them on hold position. What happened? That could have been massive for Soul Key if he had those on hold position. Oh, another one on hold, or not on hold position over here, but... Oh, Scourge are going to get in and kill a bunch of these Valkyries. The Mutas take a lot of damage there. But everything pushing forward is going to get wrecked. All these Marines are going to end up going down. There's only two left and two tanks. If he can put together a few more Scourge and hit this army, pick off these Valkyries, then he could finish off everything with the Mutas, no problem. He has some uh, mutas over here. Any more Scourge on the way? I don't see them. Consume is coming up. Another Lurker Landmine over on this side. But it's not, again, on hold position. I'm really shocked that he's making these mistakes right now. We've got one Lurker on high ground over here. That could easily be broken. We have a Nidus, though. And some Lurkers and Defilers are out. So I think he should be able to hold. He's bought enough time for the Defilers to get that upgrade. And so he should be able to hold everywhere. Another Lurker Landmine out here in the front. Still no vessels to detect those, but we are switching into full-on mech. Oh, man, I love to see it. I love to see it. It'll be fun. Mech game here once again from Light. Let's see how it goes this time. Oh, not getting any connections on those Scourge. The four Valkyries dealing so much damage, and now five able to nuke those Scourge out of the sky before they can even connect with any of these valkyries extra hatches coming up now we have plague on the way he's gonna hit with the mutas to draw the fire from these valkyries and then dive in with the scourge he gets two and he doesn't lose too many mutas he's gonna come in from another angle see if he can get a hit here he does get one more the number is just a bit too low at this point of valkyries to keep these alive to demolish the Scourge before they can get in range. So he does pick those off. More Valkyries coming out here, surprisingly, as this mech switch is beginning. Still more tanks being produced. Vultures are incrementing out as well. We've got mines on the way, but he can't make progress anywhere. Sulky is completely shutting him down, and he should be able to take his fourth on low ground in just a few moments. We don't have enough energy for Dark Swarm, but you can imagine... Sulky will not let that lapse. He will keep that alive over here at the natural. Oh, a bunch of Marines getting caught. Moving out against this Lurker Landmine. Let's see how many kills. Just three. We didn't miss anything there. Valkyrie's coming up to this side, but there's already a, uh, Lurk, or a Defiler in position. Lurker's here on the high ground. He's not going to be able to take this base immediately because the tanks are here. But great plague. Absolutely massive plague. He should be able to walk down the ramp and just Dark Swarm. And that Burrow here will keep his base alive. He should be able to push down here and take this base. Meanwhile, Light taking a base at 6 o'clock. We could see a double expand here out of him. There's the second expansion. We'll be floating that down to low ground and going full on into mech. Plus one is on the way. Not quite there yet. We've already got plus one armor for Sulky, but he's not that far ahead. He's going to be able to stay one upgrade ahead. Um, so when he's on uh, two armor, 
then I think light will be on. Oh, he wasn't able to kill that. Oh, okay. It actually did die. That's crazy. That is pretty crazy. The mines there not able to connect. I think the spine shot this way, but because the mine was right on top of the lurker here, the spine there, the origin of the spine killed the mine before it could connect. That's like the fastest part of the, the spine, right? We come in one more time. See if he can kill a bunch of these Valkyries. He gets one or two, but he loses every Muta. So not the greatest trade here from Solki. And these Valkyries can now kind of roam free a little bit. Start to pick off Overlords potentially. Fourth base is going to set up. The barracks are floating. The engineering bay floating as well. Just going to send it out on the map. Start to get more information as to what's going on. And we are going to have a huge macro game between these two. Mech versus what, though? We've got mostly upgrades for ground going on. We don't have any Hydralis upgrades going, though. And we've got one armor for Flyer coming up. Um, does he already have one armor? No. So this is not armor 2. This is armor 1 that we're investing in. Dark Swarm. There it is. He should be able to hold off against this just small tank push. But mines are going to be containing uh, Soul Key for now. Trying to set up in a position where maybe he could hit a drone at this corner. But a, a few lings will be able to come out and deal with this. No problem. Just keep sending out little waves of lings and he should be able to uh, clear that area. Um, yeah, here we go. Just going to send him out. Again, clearing some mines. Eventually, that tank will go down. Let's see. Is there going to be a queen transition? There's the Ultralis cavern. I'm not a big fan of Ultras versus Mech. I'll be honest with you guys. I think you know me. I'm not a big fan of this play. I think it's um, possible to make it work. Uh, especially if you have a big upgrade advantage. But the upgrade advantage is not huge right now. See, we've got plus two done. But plus one is done. And plus two is already on the way. So, you know, he's going to have maybe one upgrade advantage. Another Valkyrie going to go down. Looks like he's been sharking around looking for overlords, but not finding too much. Some of these have a couple of kills. Mostly Mutas, I think, though. It went down earlier. So many vultures on the map. It's giving him some... Oh, look at that. One Ling here. Or maybe three Lings in this space. Just uh, burrowed here for now. There is a turret coming up though. So eventually that will be picked off. More and more drones coming up. We're reaching that critical mass. Like 60 or so, so drones. To where massive amounts of ultras and stuff can come out on the map. I like the ventral sacks at this point in the game. Having ventral sacks is great. I love also that we have um, the burrow upgrade so early. Having that burrow upgrade is fantastic. It's going to help us out a lot in some of these situations. Having just lings burrowed out on the map is great too. Burrow ling down here and over here. It's going to save you a lot of headache. Um, when trying to scout the, the bases and when the extra expansions are going to be coming up for Terran. Because eventually he will want to take the bottom right hand corner. That's how you kind of win as Terran going mech on one of these maps. Is you want to have just massive amounts of base. You want to split the map in half and have tanks on high ground everywhere. So that Ultras just can't deal their damage. And get amazing trades over and over again. It's kind of like Protoss when they... But batten down the hatches on half the map. You can't really trade well with them as a Zerg player. Uh, Protoss has Storm. And Terran has Siege Tanks. And both make it very hard to trade. Luckily not going to get hit by these uh, spider mines right now. Should be moving around with a small group of Mutas and uh, Overlord. Just start clearing out these mines everywhere. Uh, it's a good opportunity to do so now because there's really not that much anti-air. We do have quite a few Valkyries. But sending Valkyries out on the map is scary at the moment because there's not the critical mass necessary to just wipe out Scourge as they come from, especially multiple angles. 
Coming forward, taking more bases. The fifth base has been established for Soul Key. Gonna transfer drones now. Gotta be really careful with these drone transfers because Mass Vulture will annihilate drones incredibly quickly. We don't have any sunkins over here, but we're gonna see some of these bases start to get sunken up pretty hard. We wanna add like maybe three, maybe four sunkins at each base just to make sure that you can't take any damage uh, from these vulture run buys. Setting up now a big tank line over here on the right hand side. Double command center being built down here. That is crazy. Crackling is done. Look at how good these cracklings fight against the uh, SCVs <laughs> that don't have any upgrades. 3 1 for these lings is kind of crazy. They do so much damage. And one lurker going down there. That's a little bit frustrating. He's trying to clear mines with lings which is not the most efficient way to do it definitely with the mutas and overlords much better but he's using the mutas to slowly pick away at all of these barracks and floating buildings around the map i think he's allowed light to grow a little bit too big though like light really hasn't been slowed down much he's got so many bases now and so many uh tanks and he's about to get plus three plus three is on the way so we only have a small amount of time that we're actually going to be ahead on upgrades. Ooh, a lot of these uh, vessels are going to go down. That's pretty rough. Um, building vessels when you're going mech is tough because you just don't have that much gas left over after building all your tanks and goliaths. Um, so you really want to try to preserve those as much as possible and losing one uh, is really, really painful. I don't see any drops coming out yet and I don't see queens or queen upgrades coming. So I'm a little bit worried for Soul Key. I wonder how this is going to go for him. Nice plague on all of these. And the Scourge should be able to come through and deal with that. All right, they're going to kill one. He just needs to wait for the uh, plague to do its damage and then bring the Mutalus around to deal with that. Um, they'll one-shot everything after the plague has brought them down to 3 HP. There is plus one on these Valkyries. It's very strong. He's killing some overlords, which is unfortunate. Really need to bring these Mutalists back to just deal with that. Very annoying for Soul Key right now, who's not totally maxed out yet, but he just needs like one more overlord and he'll be fine. He's building five. Okay. He's really going to have uh, open supply at this point. No sunkins here. No sunkins here. It's dangerous. But look at all the ultras that have been pumped out at this point dude where is he gonna go with these wherever this goes he's probably gonna be able to break through um but will it be enough if he doesn't break through anywhere uh with all of these ultras that he's built i think that light is gonna completely take control of this game you can see he's mining on so many different bases right now lings are spreading out being sent forward just to deal with some mines Taking some mine damage on this first ultra. He's trying to clear some of these uh, vultures, but they're really eating up a lot of mines. Uh, they're really, um, the, the mines are really eating up a lot of these lings and vultures are eating up a lot of the lings uh, that are supposed to be clearing the mines right now. Some irradiates come down as well. He's starting to pick up stuff, I think. Maybe getting some, some lift offs. Okay, he is picking up a... Uh, some of his defilers to make sure that they don't get immediately irradiated. Um, coming forward even farther. Light is actually pushing in right now, which I'm surprised about. I thought he would sit more passively and just wait for the Terran or the Zerg player to come to him as the Terran right now, but he's actually gonna allow a pretty reasonable trade uh for Soul Key. Like these ultras got right on top of the tanks immediately, and they're coming from multiple angles. They might be able to clear everything. Actually, I think they will for sure clear everything. We don't have mines in front of this, and there's not a lot of vultures to help clear everything. So with the Dark Swarm and the Lings and Ultras clearing, this has gone very well for uh, Sulky. You can see his supply is still at 180. I'm just shocked to see Terran players still do stuff like this. Looks like a bunch of drones got killed over here. That's part of the problem of, you know, not putting down those Sunkins. The, the vulture run buys can be super deadly. Gonna try and hit 6 o'clock, it looks like. Sending everything across the map. Uh, tons of ultras. A whole bunch of lings coming through here. But the mines are gonna be killer. 
His mind is just dealing so much damage, doing so much work uh, for light. Just all the heavy lifting of dealing with the ultras has been done by these mines. Like this ultra is going to end up going down as well, and no breaking through anywhere. He hasn't been able to make progress on the map right now. He's going to be able to shut down the center right and center left, but there's nowhere else to take on this map for soul key other than those two bases and these are the two bases that are easy to push like we've got so many tanks he's gonna max out again pretty soon and once he's maxed try taking this base it's such a quick push distance to get here this one as well just pushing up onto this high ground and then you can cl claim that base or maybe not claim it but you can at least deny it from your opponent we've got a bunch of scans coming out I don't think he just saw these overlords heading around the side of the map, though. This is a big drop. A lot of ultras. Do we have Defiler in there as well? Yes, we do. Big Defiler and Ultra drop coming around the side. I don't believe that Light has seen this. He's only going to see it at the last possible moment, right as it's coming into this base. And he might be able to take out this base in the bottom right. If he drops here on high ground on top of all of these uh, factories, he might just be able to kill it. Let's see if he can make it happen. I think he just spotted these overlords coming with the vultures. Um, but still, there's nothing he can really do about this right now. Dropping off a few lings here and there. He's going to drop ultras now too. They're kind of in the firing range of these uh, tanks on this side. A counterattack going down here to 6 o'clock is going to draw the attention of light. While this drop does its damage, picking off all of the factories in this base is massive. If he can get all these kills... It's going to be huge, huge for Soul Key. I'm really shocked that we didn't see Light have a bunch of tanks on the high ground right there. He's actually decided to keep all of his tanks out here, and he's not unseizing to come down and actually deal with this attack. He's more so worried about just keeping control over this lane and this lane over here, making sure that no large attacks can come from Soul Key, which could take him out. A wall clearing this was mostly just irradiates and vultures with mines finally bringing a few tanks down setting up on that high ground would be big and links taking okay trades against the tanks killing off a couple of them here and there but it's still looking a little bit dire for soul key i would say this is um not a good position to be in when your opponent has half the map uh, even though he did some good damage down here in the bottom right the base is still stands, still a lot of SCVs for uh, Light, and the army is shredding horribly right now for Soul Key. He's barely getting any uh, return out of these little investments of Lings sent out across the map. I mean, you do have a pretty big amount of Lings and a, a huge amount of minerals to work with, so it's not like the Lings aren't cheap. It's just eventually this does add up. When you keep trading at, uh, for basically nothing in return, the Terran player is going to stay maxed and your follow-up attacks are not going to be able to do much. He's just running in here against masses of tanks. The Ultras are getting cleaned pretty well. He's targeting down Defilers to make sure that the uh, Dark Storms don't get down right on top of these tanks and make it difficult for him to clear. He will go ahead and pick off a few tanks here on high ground. D Matrix there helping out a little bit. A base is being taken in the center left. This is going to be the point of contention on this map. Uh, if Soul Key can hold this base, he might be able to overwhelm Light the longer the game goes on. It's like some damage was done down here. Something was pulled back, but still plenty of SCVs. 72 SCVs remain for Light. So not a serious amount of damage was done there. He's going to hit in a, another location. Thing over here at the center left. He's coming in with some lings here as well. Pretty good job by Sulky with these counterattacks, but now Light is on the move. I don't know about this move from Light. Like, why are we attacking into Sulky right now? We only need to deny bases and just hold our own bases. Uh, stabilization is the name of the game uh, against this, and he's actually running in, getting so close to the rally point. He should be able to hit the the hatcheries now but everything popping out is going to be right on top of him uh, the ultras and stuff oh my god that ultra just vaporized he had full hp and he disappeared in one shot that is crazy tanks on high ground here i think light doing the right thing now 
Setting up tanks up here and here is going to be able to defend his bases. Clearing out these as well. Going to get his mining going once again. Has uh, some tanks building on that high ground. Some vultures running around looking for kills. Seeing what they can find out on the map. Maybe he could snipe that defiler, but he chooses not to. Just going to back away from that. Tanks on the low ground, they do not have vision of high ground right now, so they can't see that there's a lot of uh, ultras up here. We could easily drop on top of all of this. I'm surprised we haven't seen that yet. There's the queens. Okay, he does make the transition into queens. I didn't see them in the production tab, but the queens are the last piece of the puzzle. They are the thing that we need, the, the extra utility that Zerg needs to make this... Uh, the trading actually worth it for him. So now he can come out and clear the small number of tanks that are left over with pure ultra link. Uh, when the big line of tanks is, is there, it's just so hard to take that efficiently. But once the queens are in the picture, uh, the, suddenly the impossible becomes possible. We've got these queens regening their energy, but I think EMP is going to come forward. Oh, great pickups here. Finishing off all of those science vessels. Really important that he picks those off before the next big attack. Great snipes on the defilers, though. I think he might have been going for, like, a plague or something. Uh, dropping the Dark Swarm would have been in range, but I think he was trying to look for a big plague on a whole bunch of these tanks. He wasn't able to find it. EMP! Oh, the EMP is so big! Oh, man, that EMP is killer. Finally, we'll come out with uh, one queen, but this is what? Five queens that don't have energy now. And it's going to take a long time for them to regen that. Coming forward with another group of queens. No more EMP ready for light. He's getting shoved back really strongly. Soul key surrounding and killing all of these tanks would be massive. He's then going to be able to split and just hit all these different bases. It'll be very hard for light to stabilize everywhere if he loses this army out on the map. He doesn't have much back at home. Could easily be hit here. There's nothing really defending the main. It's so lightly defended right now, in fact. I think that if Soul Key just went for the main base with a bunch of Lings and Ultras, he could probably break in there and make this game really, really difficult for light. This base has been mining for a good amount of time now. He's managed to suck up more resources than Light at this point. Light is uh, still looking good on resources in these bases down in the bottom right. But he's going to start another command center. Try to take over this base if he can. A lot of tanks on high ground right now. Should be able to deal with this. Let's see if he can break in. He's doing a good job of uh, focusing the ultras to get on top of these tanks. But yeah, as you can see, tanks with this many upgrades are going to crush through the ultra list for the most part. 3-3 three, three is just so powerful in any matchup. It's scary to deal with. We've got two more vessels with full HP. He's going to be looking to get an EMP. The earlier EMP was... Looking very clutch, but he's lost all of those previous vessels. And oh, he might lose these two. Oh, man. I think he accidentally overkilled that first vessel with way too many Scourge. He could have gotten them both, but he didn't split properly. Now one vessel remains. Could he get the EMP that might end this game? He's pushing across the map with 177 supply. Scanning, looking out for those queens. Throws down one Irradiate. Still has energy for the uh, EMP. He's going to go for it. This army is going to get pushed back. But where are the... Okay, he goes actually for a, an Iridium on the fire. That's a little bit funny. Going after this group of queens would actually be insanely worth. It would be so good for him. But now this army is kind of sitting out here in the middle of the map with not much direction. And we're getting very close to brutaling energy again. We just need to delay a little bit longer here as a Zerg player. Keep the uh, Terran off of our back for just a little longer. And then we can come in with a big wave of Queens, knock out most of these tanks, 
and deny this space. I think that'll be the killing blow if like or if uh, Soul Key can make it happen. If Light can't deny that with an EMP, and I don't see any vessels out here. No vessels uh, that I've spotted just yet. Wow, a lot of wraiths though. That's cool. I like that. Wraiths could come in and deal a lot of damage. Um, he could snipe like every queen if he does it right. Coming in with the queens now. Gonna lose a few of them to the Goliaths, but he gets a good number of tanks. Only three remain. He's actually clearing the space pretty handily. And Light is gonna get pushed back. Uh, for sure. He's not going to be able to make any progress. And more queens are coming forward. This is the time to bring out the race. He has to make the move now. Uh, he might have. He might already be too late. Honestly. Because these queens are going to come in. Snipe like five tanks. And then there's only going to be two or three remaining. Go, go, go. Yeah, two tanks remain. Looks like all the queens will end up dying to the cloak rates. But he should be able to break bottom right now. As long as he brings forward everything at the same time. With only two tanks, okay, now four tanks on high ground. He might just be able to get through here. Oh, ultras getting stuck on each other. He's going to bring everything together. Make sure he can make this happen. The queens are going down back at home. It's a little bit unfortunate. Pretty sweet play from Light, though. You love to see it. He's been denied the entire game from um, getting those EMPs down. So switching it up into some Wraith play. Makes a lot of sense. The tanks are holding so well on high ground. Had to lift the CC though, and another wave is coming down. Another wave of tanks though, but a lot of kills on these wraiths. They've actually killed all the drones up at the 12 o'clock, but Soul Key is completely focused on taking out the base in the bottom right. That's all he wants to do right now. He's gonna drag mines into these tanks. Doesn't really do a great job of that, but he's getting on top of them with his ultras. Wow, everything just explodes there. And pretty good micro out of light, but he's running out of space to move back to. The tank here will finally be finished off. And I think this might be the end. Wraiths are doing so much damage, killing off a lot of these workers, but I just don't see it as enough. I think that with this base getting taken down, you can see the supply is vastly in favor of Soul Key. He just needs to get in on this base, and there's not enough tanks to deny him. Not enough tanks to take the fight as efficiently as he needs. He has the SCVs here. He could have stopped positioned them to try and hold back the tanks, but he will just run into the mineral line. I think quite a few of these uh, SCVs are probably going to go down to the splash damage uh, from these tanks. More lings coming down. More queens coming out as well. Dude, these wraiths have done so much damage. Okay, finally they are going to uh, uncloak. And everything is going to get pushed back on one base right now, though, is light. That is all he has. He leaves this game well done by Soul Key. The queen transition, that extra utility is all he needs to take on this mass tank player. Avoiding the critical EMPs there was key to his victory in this game. Very well played on both sides. This is exactly what I was looking forward to. I wanted to see a big game like this. It's uh, light going into mech, though, was not what I was expecting. It was a fun one, though. Still got more coming up. We'll jump into that right now. Well, that was quite an interesting game on Vermeer. We're now moving into Apocalypse. We've got Soul Key in the bottom left. Light over here in the top center. Uh, this map, I feel pretty balanced, honestly. Uh, especially in this matchup. This is one of my favorite three-player maps of all time. Um, Neil Silphid is right up there as well. Um, most of the time, I'm not a big fan. It's, I, I feel like this is a better map, maybe, than uh, Ascension. Which is kind of what this is based off of. Ascension, really, really similar. Uh, still a pretty good map, but... I feel like this one, they hit a little bit of a better uh, balance, I think, with the structures of the map and the way that it plays out in each different matchup. I think this might be a map that we see for a good long time. It might be sticking around in the zeitgeist or in the meta, in the uh, map pool for things like ASL and stuff for quite some time. I might be wrong, though. 
There are some crazy new maps that are coming out uh, potentially in this next season of ASL. Definitely uh, some wild ones have been added to the map pool. Uh, we don't have a final map pool yet to see exactly what's going to be played or where there's, those games are going to be played, but we have some good information as to what they might be. Uh, some good contenders uh, for that those positions. Opening up with a pool this time is Solkian. I believe this was Overpool. Or was this 9? No, this is a 9 pool build. The Overlord popping out right there. This is a 9 pool build with 6 slings coming across the map. We've already got Marines though in a very nice position. Uh, right in front of this wall. And there's just nothing that Solkian can do. He's going to eat a big deficit this game. And yeah, he just can't do anything about it. That is unfortunate. He was hoping to catch like an 8 racks or something. Or maybe like a, a CC first. That can just die. Either of those two can just die to a 9 pool. But in this case, he's guessed wrong. Happens sometimes. You got to throw it in every once in a while, the, the 9 pool. Just to keep the Terran player honest. Make sure they don't 8 racks you every single game. Now coming out on the map with 5 Marines. I don't really understand the value of this. Why would we we would want to move out with five marines? There's already six lings here. He finally does kill the SCV. I think we'll see this turn around now. Yeah, just as I say it, he does turn the marines back. Maybe gonna just stand on the high ground, see if he can catch a couple of lings as they're coming up the ramp. That might be a good move, but Soul Key is just gonna sit here on his side, make sure he's ready for uh, the marines coming up his own ramp. So not really much that can be done on either side. And both players are going to start this transition uh, into the mid game. We've already got the Academy on the way. Academy before second racks is a little bit interesting. Are we going to see another Valkyrie build out of light, uh, light here? It's possible. The gas is pretty quick. No second racks is um, questionable. Not sure what exactly he's going for. But... Quite a few links are out now for Sulky. He's actually building three more sets. Dude, why is he going so heavy into links every game? It's it's like every game this series he's been doing this. And I really feel like Light is going to smash it down now finally. Yeah, he is probably just going to spike this into the ground. Uh, this Ling play. Finally. He's been moving out almost every game with the Naked Marines. And getting punished by it. I wonder if he'll do it even one more time. Second Rax is coming up. Factory? No, Engineering Bay on the way. Yeah, he's not going to be doing a... Um, yeah, this is a weird build from Light. Usually if you do a build like this, you're going to go Engineering Bay quick with one Rax. And get your plus one early. This game he's gone for kind of a weird middle of the road sort of build where he didn't, he just kept the barracks pumping the whole time, but he doesn't have the move out timing that he should. Now coming forward here with the lings. This is such a bad trade for uh, Soul Key. He loses so many. He does kill like three Marines or something, but he, and he gets a medic. But I mean, this is just fantastic. I think for light. There was so much commitment to the Lings in this game. And Solki, he got the best that, trade that he could. Uh, just being killing off a few of those Marines on the outside of the base. But he's been completely shut down. There's so few Lings left that I don't think he can even hope to, you know, combo Lings with Mutas to actually pick off the move out when it comes. There's going to be a lot of turrets built. Light knows exactly his position. He knows that all he needs to do is survive this uh, aggression that's going to come out of Soul Key, get into a good position with his Marine number, and he should be fine. He should be really well off in this game. He's already almost got range. He's got plenty of turrets in the main base, plenty of turrets in the natural as well. A third Rax is going to start. Plus one is on the way. These mutas really can't do much. And he only builds five. That's interesting. So a lot of drones on the way. Sulky, I think, realizing that there's a lot of turrets here and not much that can be done. 
He's only got five meters, so you can't even one-shot SCVs. He's just going to transition as quickly as possible by building up a bunch of drones, but I don't know if he can actually survive. He is the best in the world at doing this exact play where he's just droning a whole bunch and then as soon as the marines start to move out he switches back suddenly into mutas and lings and then overwhelms and kills this bio force out on the map it's tough to do though very tough to do and someone like light is not going to make it easy for you the third base is coming up it's just about done we have that hydralis den on the way he is going to make the transition but it's just not a very comfortable position for Sulky. This is not the way I like to play because it feels bad. It just doesn't feel like a strong spot that you're in at this point. But he's making it work somehow. He's actually forced the Marines back without even trading anything. He hasn't tr he hasn't even killed any Marines yet. He's just been, you know, backing up and flying in and then backing up and flying in again. Forcing out stims, just not taking trades. He doesn't have that many meters. He's starting to add on more, though. Still has that small group of links. Light feels scared. It looks like he feels scared the way that he's playing. He doesn't want to lose this bio force. Uh, and he's worried about taking a bunch of damage here from Soul Key. So he's really keeping back into his natural, not really putting pressure onto Soul Key. And Soul Key's getting away with. Only making the bare minimum number of mutas and making the transition start immediately after. He will have that hive coming in just a moment. He should have hydras popping. Yeah, you can see three hydras on the way. And he's taking this base over here. Now, one thing I'd like to comment on is players recently have been taking this space rather than this space more and more. And I'm really starting to like it. I think that it's the right play. This space is so wide open. It's very hard to hold uh, as the mid game approaches. This is much easier to hold. You can put sunkins right there and put a couple of lurkers in between the sunkins and you can hold off a lot of marine medic. And that allows you to build up into a big force of Hydralis Defiler or potentially get into uh, Ultra, but then take this base as your fourth really smoothly. That smooth fourth base is what the Zerg players are looking for, it seems, these days. Because that's really the difficulty of playing this matchup, is getting that fourth base out to get that extra gas that you need to power ahead of your uh, opponent. Just lose the first muta. I think that's the first, the very first muta that's gone down. Suddenly a bunch do fall. And Overlord's going to go down as well. We have Lurkers out on the map, but they were spotted by... Light, who could spread his marines and just take these out. And then there's not going to be a whole lot of defense for Soul Key back at home. He snipes a lurker immediately. Two, in fact, go down right off the bat. The Muta's trying to engage, but they're really not getting much out of it. Now we're going to have uh, Irradiates. And the lurkers here, I think they're going to end up getting taken out. He needs to bail out of this position or he's going to be in a lot of trouble. A couple of sunken colonies are not ready. There's no sunkens at all. Oh man, this is looking grim for Solki. The spread is so good here for Light. Light is going to surround this entire army, kill everything, but the two vessels both go down. That's actually a big trade back for Solki. Really, really important that he got some kills there. That he was able to trade something back for all the lurkers that he just lost. He could make some more hydras over here start to defend but it doesn't feel like that's the plan he's gonna pull back his lurkers now has more a popping in just a few moments he's lost all of his mutas though so he doesn't have any way to slow down this push forward and light might just take this right now okay more lurkers are gonna pop burring them up just at the last moment he's gonna run by oh man this is scary the run by is crazy um the potential for it is there uh, Scourge are going to come out, but he could easily target those down, especially once the Lurkers and Lynx pull back. A couple of Irradiates do go down, and Light will be forced away, at least for now. The Overlord here. Heading out on the map. Not sure where that's going. Lynx making their way over towards this natural. Seeing what 
little bits of damage that they can pick up. Maybe check out uh, if they can snipe a base or something like that. Maybe get us around on one of these uh, SCVs that's building a command center. Oh man, a gamble from Sulky. He's going to be moving out on the map with one defiler. He doesn't even have energy for an irradiate or for a dark swarm though. This is a really big gamble from him. He's going to consume what? What is he going to consume? He's pretending like he's got uh, enough energy for a plague to kind of push back these Marines, but he really doesn't have that. One lurker here going to move in an awkward direction. It's going to be chased down. The rest are going to head straight back home. This was an interesting gamble from Sulky, but it's really not going to work out here. He's keeping some Lings active on the right-hand side, hoping that he can catch anything heading down to the bottom right, but it's almost undefended in this area. We've got double drop ship coming up. Sulky's played a very scrappy game, just holding his high ground out here rather than holding the both the naturals, which has been working out for him well so far, but how's he going to fare once the drop ships come out and start hitting him? I think he's going to have a very hard time with that. Unfortunately, not going to bring the scourge forward in time to deal with these vessels instead he's gonna get a dark swarm on this high ground and maybe open up a path for more defilers to make it their way over there but we still have energy on vessels oh no there's no energy here on these vessels maybe he can get a defiler to the front nope one vessel gonna come forward gets rid of that defiler he's not gonna make it into the natural and i think he can just go around this Oh, Dark Swarm. Yeah, he's going to be able to go around. Soul Key taps out, especially as the drop comes into the main base. He knows that he's done. He's tried really hard to bring this one back after so much commitment to the links in the early game, though. It's really hard to play out a macro game uh, against a player of the caliber of light. He tried to get keep it scrappy, try to fight with the lurkers and... Uh, mutas and defilers and all that but in the end light's able to take this one home good comeback game from him uh showing that he is indeed a powerful uh, defensive terran player uh, if you let him get a little bit of a lead it's going to be incredibly hard to uh, come back against him he's just very powerful uh, with his production has so many units out already i think it was like double the supply already uh, of soul key and with the drop coming in as well you're just not going to be able to pull one over on him he's constantly scanning he's checking finding the defilers and getting the irradiates down and good on him we're going to be jumping into our next game here Let's get after it time for game number eight here we're once again on retro soul key in the bottom left hand corner light in the top left so pretty similar to the game we saw earlier on this map i think wasn't this the exact same position or was it cross map? Maybe Sulky up here and Light down here. I can't quite remember if that was retro or not. That mech game. But uh, now that I think about it, uh, that was Vermeer, wasn't it? Retro was, I think, the same position. And Sulky going to be feeling a little bit bad about that last game. He has been overreacting with Lings lately, I feel. Like the way that he's been pumping out Lings, it feels like uh, he's expecting just normal timings out of Light, but Light's been doing some interesting builds. He's not sticking to just the stock standard two, uh, fact, or two barracks, a marine timing. He did something a little bit off that last game and went for the armory a lot quicker to make sure that he had the upgrades rolling and then got the later second barracks and had a much later timing to push out and sulky just didn't have any time left he didn't he, he really needed to get in and deal the damage with those lings so he ends up throwing a lot of them away and just putting himself in such a bad position i hope that we see more macro play out of him and just reacting to what Terran, the Terran player is doing rather than trying to get in with Lings again and you know get the quick early kill this time eight racks out of light looks like he's nailed this one once again it's a 12th hatchery from Sulky and this time it's a much quicker rush distance so we've seen Sulky hold this a bunch of times already 
We've seen him handle eight racks very, very well. But finally, there's an opportunity, I think, for Light to get a kill. Ooh, six HP on that. Would have needed two more shots from the Gauss rifle. So he's going to be okay right now. Going to be able to get that drone back home, potentially. Um, Pretty far out bunker placed from placement from light only three drones are getting pulled okay there's the rest i was wondering about just three drones you should really send this back into the main to gather some more resources because it is quite low he's gonna pull all the drones together now this is like seven drones i guess nine drones excuse me all nine drones uh nine out of 13 so he's got four mining inside the main he's not able to run by this and this is really powerful for light if he can now he should try to run by i think run by run by go get the draw or the the worker that's coming or the marine that's coming oh okay he does get on top of the marines but this is a really good play from light pulling back and keeping the majority of the marines alive it's like lings are now finally out though they will be able to kill the bunker and he could run around this or he can just stay and make sure that he doesn't take any more damage um, only two drones went down. Okay, he's going to try and run by, and that's a little bit scary. Three Marines coming forward. They can deal with these two Lings. More Lings should be popping out, though. And these Lings that are going around can't really deal any damage. They can't really get anything done, unfortunately, for Sulky. Going for an SCV, not quite able to get it. Can't really deal any damage over here. He could pick off a Marine, though, if it pops out on the wrong side. I think it's going to pop out on this side, though. I think he's got this uh, building planned out just well enough so that pops out on the right side. Um, or, sorry, on the left side, but the correct side. Yeah, there it is. Link's going to come back. Try to deal with this bunker. We are building five drones right now for Soul Key, so he is getting into his production once again. Coming out, trying to get a Ling kill here or there. Let's get one. Might get a second. It's a little bit annoying. Has two SCVs for the repair. Needs to wait until he's got the correct number of Lings before taking this bunker on. If he fails at all, if this doesn't go as planned... Okay, the SCVs are going to pull back. Now he can just kill the bunker. No big deal at all. He's got enough Lings for sure to make that happen. A little bit funny that he's still playing footsies here with the Terran. But now finally, okay, he's going to pull the trigger. Here we go. Just kill the bunker. Get it over with. Oh, what? He's just going to let the Marines run in and kill a drone? Is that what we're about to see? Going after the drone? He doesn't get it. Good job by Soul Key keeping that alive. And the layer is on the way. It's about halfway done. What's the follow-up now from Light? Well, it's going to be plus one. Straight into plus one. All the timings are way behind. As you can see, five minutes in, you would usually be pushing out with Marines by now. Uh, but in this case, he's not going to be able to make that happen. He's been dealt with appropriately by Soul Key. So I don't really understand why Soul Key has shied away from building a 12 hatch every game in this series. Like, why not? It really feels like he's got the number of these 8 Rex plays. Like, he can handle this very easily. And he's in a much better spot than any of those games where he went for 9 pool or over pool. Or pool before hatchery. Uh, pool first, I guess you could call the builds. Any of those games where he went pool first. He seemed to be in a much worse position because of all the links that he made. Now we're going to get a scan on the side of Light just to see what's going on in Sulky's base. He's got the timing of the Spire now. He knows exactly when it's going to finish. And he can add on the turrets appropriately. It's really hard to tell exactly where you're at. In a game that's like this, where you've delayed the Zerg player a little bit and uh, slowed them down. He's actually going to be able to get five racks immediately. Um, before adding on any of his turrets. So this is a great spot for light. But it's not crazy good, right? We've still got plenty of drones coming. 26 workers already. We have the hatch at the third finished. And we will start to produce some mutas here in a moment. So, although it's looking good for light, there's still opportunities now for Soul Key to get in, deal some damage. And he's got a lot of lings to work with as well. You can never underestimate Soul Key when he's got lings. The early lings that he builds 
uh, generally never go to waste. He's always using them to shut down Marines later on in the game or deal counterattack damage. Um, even though we've got this big Bioforce out, they're excellent when paired with a bunch of Mutas to clear that Bioforce. So we can expect to see him keeping these active and helping to kill off this Marine Medic Force, but it is a scary Marine Medic Force with five racks pumping away. He's going to add some turrets now, but his Marine threat out on the map, I think is going to keep Solki at bay. All right. Yeah, it's going to keep Solki at bay. It's going to keep him from diving into the Terran main and dealing any damage or the natural. Of course, the natural is a little farther away. So the main is much more accessible. That's why we see less turrets over here. But this Bioforce out on the map, it's scary. We have to deal with it. We have to fight it. Here is Solki. He has a second Sunken coming up. So maybe he has in mind an idea of uh, ignoring this Bioforce and going in for the main. But there's quite a few turrets here. There's so much production popping out every few moments that it's very hard to break the main. It's very hard. You got five Marines popping up potentially every single round. And they are quick. They do not increment out slow. Um, four creep colonies back at home. A third here on the high ground as well. Thinking about trying to stab this army. He hasn't really slowed it down much at all. This is such a big force of Marine Medic with plus one done that I'm really worried for Soul Key. He should stay alive at least, I would say. With four Sunkins, he, he shouldn't die, especially with the Mutas here. Lings on the high ground as well are going to make it very hard for anything to uh, break up this ramp. Oh my god, he's actually going for it right now? I think that Sulky's going to clean this. Yeah, he almost manages to. If this had uh, stayed to fight a little longer, I think that Sulky would have killed all the Marine Medic. We do have a factory done now. It's a little bit later than... You know, had he gone for just two Rax play or something like that. Um, and Solki, I mean, he's going to have his hive done soon. So it's a pretty well-timed hive. I don't know how much damage he's going to be able to do um, with these star ports before we can have hive out. I, I think there's going to be a timing maybe where he could get an irradiate on the first defiler. But it's going to be close. Really, really close. Four Sunkins on high ground now. Lings are just being active. Making sure they can see where these Marines are. Lings at the top of the ramp. It just makes it so difficult to break through. Six Sunken Colonies is a good number, but he still needs to keep the Beetleist back. Finding this Bioforce is huge, though. A bunch of naked Marines with no support. These are easy pickings. He doesn't want to lose... Uh, or he wants to lose as few Mutalists as possible to kill this, but he is going to kill this 100%. All these are going to die, and just a couple of Mutas do end up getting killed. So he's got still eight Mutas remaining in this flock. A Bioforce looking very scary right out in front of here, uh, in front of these Sunkins, and he's waiting for plus one armor. Is he going to go in now? He might. Yeah, stimming up. He's going to go for this. This is crazy. So many Marines here hitting these sunken colonies. The Sunkins are getting low. Good targeting here by Light. Where are the Lings to come in from the back? I don't see them. Maybe they already died. The Sunkins are getting picked off, and the Mutalist stack is getting lower and lower. There's still six, so he can still one-shot. Still one-shotting these Marines one by one. Picking them off. Lowering this count. Still quite a few medics remain, though. More Ling's going to pop out. Can he actually finish this? Finish the job here? Can he actually pick this off? He has to add more Sunkins immediately because Light could pull the trigger on another attack in just a moment. He has to get this wall of Sunkins back up and running here in a moment. Nidus Canal is now attached. We've got the Defiler Mound and Consume upgrade coming. Whew, we've just barely survived here, Sulky. Just barely. That was incredibly close. Great micro with the Mutas to keep... Uh, the Sunken's tanking as much as possible, and Muta's in high enough number to continue to one-shot. If he lost the ability to one-shot during that final attack, the uh, Marines would have killed this last Sunken, and then everything would have died. All of the drones would have ended up dying. You can see there's hardly anything popping out, just a few Lings popping out to come and assist after the fact. Oh, these 
Stupid Scourge. Oh my god, the Scourge is so dumb. Not really uh, taking this fight very well, but the Ling's gonna come in from behind. Do they have plus one armor? No, they do not. The army here of Light is just way too strong. We do have two Lurkers finished now. So with the two Lurkers, maybe he can hold on, but the Lurkers are getting lower and lower. There wasn't a Radiate on at least one of them, and he breaks through. This is it. Soul Key is gonna get kicked out of this game. The Defiler here does have Dark Swarm, though. Dark Swarm gets thrown down. He finally burrows, but it's too late. One Lurker falls, and he will likely get pushed out. Oh, he's going after the hatchery. The hatchery is so low. Yeah, he does get it. Takes a lot of damage on these Marines, but he kills the hatchery, and that's the key to victory here. As long as he snipes that hatchery, he's going to keep Sulky down for an immeasurable amount of time. He's just not going to be able to stabilize. We've got a command center over here in the top right-hand corner. It's a great follow-up for Light just hiding an extra command center over there. Um, even if Sulky somehow manages to claw his way back into this game, the follow-ups from Light are going to be way too strong. We've got plus one armor finally, but with plus one armor on these Marines and plus two attack done. Oh no, plus two attacks not quite there. Almost there though. Rotating around with these Marines. He's actually checking bottom right and now moving over here. To maybe get the Irradiate on this Defiler. Can he hop through? He does get through the Nidus just barely at the last second. That is a big moment there for Solki. He cannot be losing any Defilers right now. If Solki comes back in this game, it would be insane. This would be one of the best comebacks I've seen out of a Zerg player. If he manages to hold on and bring this to a win, that would be crazy. I just, I don't see it happening, but th these are the moves that he needs to do to make it happen. If he can get in with a couple of Scourge here and there, snipe a couple of vessels, then he won't need as much gas uh, to keep himself rolling in this game. Nice plagues going down. He gets a couple of good plagues there. Vessels are coming in for the Irradiate though on all of the Lurkers. So all the Lurkers are going to get taken down. His Lings are coming out. They can't really do too much. One vessel goes down. But that's all he's going to get for now. Oh, I hear a Wraith. Oh, man, that's so annoying. One Wraith to kill all these overlords is super frustrating to deal with. You need two Scourge to get rid of that. And it's unlikely that he's going to want to throw those Scourge away. Ah, oh, and he loses one of the Scourge, too. Oh, that's so annoying. He's going to come over here, kill this overlord. He might come kill these. He might find this as well. That's super frustrating. Only 10 HP left on that. And it still will get away and maybe kill a few more overlords. Look, he finds it. He's going to get a third overlord kill. I love it from light. It's so annoying. That's exactly what you want to do when their opponent is behind. Just keep dealing little bits of damage. Every little tiny bit of damage that you do is slowing them down massively because they're already so far uh, in a deficit. He's going to send some lings over here, maybe to the top right, maybe to the top center. Light already on four bases is so scary. He's going into Hydralisk up, upgrades, excuse me. Hydralisk Defiler, absolutely the right way to play when you're in such a deficit. But I just, I don't know. Can he actually bring this one back? Another Overlord. Four Overlords being killed. That's so frustrating. I hate it. I hate it. I love it and I hate it. That is terribly, terribly annoying for a Zerg player to deal with. Light doing exactly what he should. Adding on some bunkers over here at that fourth base. Adding bunkers here would be amazing as well. Hydra's going to come out, try to get rid of these vessels, but two irradiates will go down. Two defilers will be killed. The uh, third defiler will survive for now. Very annoying stuff. Losing those two defilers basically for free. All the... Uh, vessels do survive. Some of them are on very low HP, but still not a great situation to be in here as our Zerg. Now battle cruisers coming out as well. It's just too early. We can't handle this. He will try to get a plague on these. Looks like he's not going to be able to get plague on both of them. He actually goes for the Marines, which is a bit interesting. Should just consume everything. Consume whatever you can and just throw down another dark or another plague. He doesn't go for it though, and now his third or his natural gas is under threat. 
Oh man, it's so painful. It's so, so painful here for uh, Soul Key at the moment. He is going to be able to clear these Marine Medics in the center left. He might be able to get that base up. But the writing's on the wall for the moment. Light is taking complete control of this game. He just needs to target this extractor down with those battle cruisers because we can't really afford to make a lot of scourge right now. We just can't. We're building so many hydras and lurkers and defilers to just deal with all of the um, bio and radiates out on the map. We just can't afford to deal with the battle cruisers as well. It's not in the budget, unfortunately, for soul key he's gonna move forward can he snipe that he does snipe that that's very big has the defiler still alive as long as the defiler's with this army the army is near unstoppable dark swarm goes down a good plague there in the middle of this group he pulls back the uh defiler just in time to keep that alive he needs some more food for that we'll be bringing forward some more lings does he get the consume Ah, oh, he's just gonna run around and get get the kill here that is unfortunate you know what i would love to see is the defilers with burrow if you just have like 10 lings and you burrow a defiler in the middle of the lings and then the vessel comes uh, imagine clicking through every single burrowed little hole to try and figure out which one is the vessel <laughs> it would be so annoying so freaking annoying um for the terran player just like they can obviously just irradiate it once they find it but trying to find it is a completely different story like it takes so long i'm sure it would take a crazy amount of time to to get that to happen dark swarms more of them getting thrown down on this high ground lurker egg on the ramp is a great uh, idea to try and keep these things back hydras can't actually hit this battle cruiser but they've at least saved the gas geyser for now but sulky gonna tap out hey guess it's time to leave this game that's a, a frustrating loss there for soul key after trying so hard to bring it back he realizes he's just not going to be able to do so the battle cruisers coming out are too much the tank number is starting to get too high he doesn't have any upgrades yet but he was making those um and i mean he's pretty much max there's there's a very low chance that soul key would be able to bring this back he probably could have stuck around a little bit longer you know there are potentials like getting a plague on this group like imagine you just come out with a defiler you only have a second to react with this army pop a plague on something like that and there's a good chance that you could maybe make a comeback but it's still going to be incredibly hard and just sitting here uh in the in between the two bases and threatening both of these gas geysers is gonna force so much commitment out of soul key to try and defend that it's rough but a good game was played here by Light for sure. And he's going to go forward into our next one with a bit of a win. Let's jump right in. The final game of the series now. Soul Key spawning here in the top left-hand corner. Light in the bottom right. Dark Origin, our final map of the night. I don't know what the score is anymore. It's um, been a couple of days now that I've been casting this series. I actually made some mistakes uh, for getting to press the... Or actually, I did press the record button, but my voice wasn't getting recorded um, when I started this series the first time. So I had to redo a couple of games. Super annoying. Every time that happens, it's really frustrating. Let me just check. Okay, I am recording my voice. <laughs> just got to make sure that every time I start up my system, uh, go through like a list, a checklist to make sure that everything's being recorded. It's so frustrating to deal with. But it's even worse when I have someone else casting with me. Like sometimes I have Shun casting with me and I forget to <laughs> do my uh, checklist. And man, that really sucks. That is a super frustrating uh, situation to deal with. Interesting decision here for our final game. Light is going to just go ahead and drop an engineering bay in his opponent's natural. So many drones are getting pulled to deal with this. This is wild. Never would have expected it, but it's probably going to be a follow-up, um, maybe Wraith play for our final game. That would be fun. I'd like that. Going after this SCV pretty hard with the one drone and trying to kill the eBay with five, six workers. Is he going to be able to get the eBay again? Oh my God. If he got the eBay again, it would be so annoying. Is he going to get it? He's trying, I think. He's trying to block anyway. Dude, this is, this is a nightmare. I hate this. Oh my god, he gets it again. Oh 
Oh my goodness, this is so frustrating. He starts a spawning pool, realizing that this is what light's gonna do, and... Dude, this is a nightmare. Because you know exactly what's coming here, don't you? We're gonna have a factory set up somewhere on the map, probably over here. And he's just gonna rally the vulture immediately to the base. How are you gonna get your sunken colony up in time? How is it even possible? Tell me, I'd love to know. Drone over on this left-hand side is looking for that proxy. Unfortunately, he chose wrong. 50-50. He could have gone to the right-hand side. I think he'll actually go over there now. Dude, Solki is so smart. He's figured out exactly what the plan is here for Light. And Light, he could have actually built the factory back at home and still maybe got it past the, the sunken um, before the sunken could be finished for uh, Solki because of how long the delay was, but he's getting greedy. He wants to get this into uh, Solki's natural ASAP and he might pay for it with his life. Look at this, the SCV has 10 HP, two hits, two hits is all it takes and he will get the kill. Can he find it? Will he find it in time? Oh, it's so close. Oh, it's so close. Dude, it's gonna finish. Oh, light. He doesn't see it. Dude, he doesn't see it. Oh my god, dude. Light is so lucky right now. Solki is a genius. Light is just a lucky little Terran bugger. My goodness, that's annoying. That is so frustrating. Um, Really, genuinely scouting the entire map there and not able to find that. He's going to start the sunken. Go, 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 go. We need this sunken so badly. Going to run forward with two Marines. Start to hit that. Drawing out the... Uh, Lings, maybe? Oh, this drone is going to end up going down. Oh, man. It's so annoying that he didn't find that. Genuinely so frustrating. He's found this little tiny corner where he can hit stuff coming down the ramp. And really, Solki can't do anything about it. He's going to eventually get enough Lings together to surround that and kill it. That's not going to do as much damage as he had hoped. But maybe this Vulture will do that extra damage. going to jump this one over the mineral field. Tries to... No, he's not going to be able to run up the ramp there. He's got to cover that ramp, though. This ramp is so important. Is he ready for it? Dude, Solki's so smart. Even when everything goes wrong, he's still going to be able to figure out a way to bring this back. He's going to catch this. Almost 100%. Oh, he kind of missed there. Now there's some more space for this to run around. He gets it. Man, I am in awe. I am in awe of Solki in this game. Handling this Terran cheese so well. The fromage, the 17 flavors of cheese coming out of light are so difficult to handle. So difficult to catch everything. I think he got range as well already. Uh, I'm not a, pr totally sure on that, but I think that might have been in the production tab. I wasn't quite paying attention with all the craziness going on. But he's got five hydras. That's just enough. That is just enough to handle all of this. And he's going to go into drone production once again. We'll get range, or we'll get speed. Uh, I guess we'll find out if he gets range after this, whether he had it yet or not. I like to get range first because uh, if the wraiths have more range than you, and they do if you don't have range uh, on your hydras, they can, at a certain number, start to kill your hydras without losing any of them. So that can get really frustrating. So just having the range means that you'll always be able to get damage back onto the uh, wraiths and in that way eventually push them out of your base even if they're able to start fighting your hydras they're not going to be able to get you know fight them without taking any damage at all which is great uh, cloak is just about to be done coming into the main base just three wraiths not the biggest scariest number of wraiths i've ever seen he's not continuing to build them either he's actually going into tanks i believe we're gonna have a tank set up on high ground here in no time flat and he actually got a drone. Wow. Shocking that he actually managed to get that. Uh, with this many hydras around the main and natural, you would think that he would be able to block all that out. But maybe he didn't have an overlord in position to see that uh, when the clo cloak wraiths came in. Still looking for some damage, but he's unlikely to find any at this point. One wraith going to fly by. It's going to draw the hydras away. I think he loses that. Oh, just barely not. Just barely not. 
I'm gonna keep that alive. He sees everything. He doesn't see this evolution chamber though. I like the evolution chamber. I think that doing this kind of build is really smart from Sulky. You can just put down one spore at each base. It's not necessary in this game, but he doesn't know that. Get one spore and get your upgrades rolling first. Okay. Range is done now. So you actually went for uh he went for speed first, which I'm not a big fan of, but I guess it's uh, gonna give him potential for counterattack or chasing down maybe a drop of vultures that might just come in. Uh, I definitely prefer to go for range first because, like I said, players who just go mass mass wraith are gonna abuse the heck out of you if you don't have a range early. Two lurkers over here on the right hand side. That's interesting. Are we gonna go for a drop? He has speed. He has speed on his overlords, but I don't think he's got drop. I really didn't see that coming. It is a follow-up marine push with a tank coming soon. But we've got lurkers and hydras to fight this. I don't think you're going to be able to break through as a light in this position. It's going to be way too hard. A tank could help out a lot. But he's going to have to rely on scans. And he's only got one CC with one scanner. Just about to have two scans up. Oh, God. This is so good. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely annihilated. <laughs> You'll love to see it. That was probably the best. The best. Uh, lurker landmine that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and uh, he leaves the game. There it is, boys. That's the end of this series. Light gets decimated by a final Lurker landmine. There's been plenty in this series. Some of them haven't gone so well, but that was one for the books. That was one of the best Lurker landmines I've ever seen. So much good play we've seen out of Solki in this series. Light playing quite strong as well in some of these games, but I, again in awe of Sulky and his ability to figure out what his opponent is doing and react accordingly. When he's playing this reactionary style, he's like the best in the world, honestly. When he's trying to do like Ling all-ins and stuff like that, it looks weak, um, but it catches people sometimes. I just, I really prefer to see him do this type of style where he just reads exactly into what you're doing, figures it out and dismantles it appropriately. It's so beautiful to watch. So amazing to watch. And he really handled this perfectly. I don't know what the... Oh, he was going to lurk or landmine over here, too. Did he get any kills with this? He got one. I wonder if that was an SCV or just a Marine walking out or something. Let's take a look at the kills on these. Six, five, two. Bro, that was disgusting. I love it. That was so good. You'll love to see it, man. Absolute filthy lurker landmine there at the end guys i hope you enjoyed this series there's plenty more to come in the future make sure to like the video if you enjoyed subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye